we have with us the Capital Planning Committee and I'll turn it over to its chair to make the introductions for his team. Hi, I'm Chris Moore. I'm the chair of the Capital Planning Committee. And we have a slide for the introduction, so we'll do it that way. That good. Um, and my co-chair, Timur Kaveyantar, is going to start off with a presentation and then we'll switch among the different member committees if we don't want. Okay, uh, so we have the presentation up. Uh, again, I'm Timur Yantar, the vice chair on the opening act tonight. Um, I wanted to start off with a uh, in progress picture of our renovation of the high school. It is certainly a capital investment, although it is not part of the capital plan. It's an exempt project, but still paying for this, uh, this, this new asset um, affects and constrains town finance. So we wanted to put that up there. Also, it's, it's the favorite example of a capital project happening right now. Uh, Tara, next slide, please. Okay, here we have tonight's agenda. Uh, what we're asking you to do uh, a little bit on who we are um, and what we do on this committee, uh, what capital is, an overview of the major issues that we uh, encountered this year and that we think will be with us for a while, um, what the capital plan has achieved recently or is currently achieving, and how it fits into our town budget. Then we'll have some detail on the main sources of funds and our recommended uses by department. Uh, finally, some, some specifics on prior borrowing, reappropriations, and then the recommended vote. Next slide, please. Uh, tonight, we're asking you to vote favorable action on our recommended uh, budget for FY25 uh, and the reappropriation of previously borrowed funds, and also to uh, endorse the five year plan, which covers FY25 29. Next slide, please. Okay, this slide is our membership um, and how each of us came to capital planning. There's town um, citizens who are appointed by the moderator. There's uh, Vice Chair Daryl Dar uh, Hammer from uh, Harmer from uh, Income. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, I know, I know. Call them MC for, net for short. And then we have four town officials on the committee. So um, just to do the introductions right now. Again, we have Chris, Timor Yantar. Alex McGee, the Deputy Town Manager, Finance Director. Uh, Joe Barr, Assistant Member. Ira Cody, Town Controller. Uh, Baby Rana Simpson. Uh, Jose Ferris, the um, APS Assistant, Assistant Director of Finance. And Joe Solomon, Citizen Member. And MC Harmer. <laughs> <laughs> we're, right. we're, we're missing uh, Julie Wayman, who's our treasurer. She can't be with us tonight. Yeah, and also uh, Don Hutton had a uh, family emergency. All right, next slide. All right, so as you do, we divide up our, uh, our tasks into committees or sorry, subcommittees. So you'll see how we have um, four standing subcommittees and we divide up the, the uh, 11 members across them as, as shown here. So public works, recreation, administration, finance, community safety. We all meet with a few of these departments every um, uh, every fall to uh, go through all their requests, and then we uh, re present them to our to our full committee and discuss them. Next slide, please. Okay, and then just want to go a little bit into why we do our capital planning uh, approach. Um, these are for long term assets. Uh, often they're costly assets we have to borrow to pay for. So therefore lead itself naturally to long-term planning. And in doing a plan over many years, we try to help reduce uncertainty. We also try to weigh the different priorities from all different uh, stakeholders uh, in order to keep within our budget. And having this dedicated group that paying attention to this, we hope, helps to reassure our citizens and our county members. And page seven. So our process, I think that you've all seen this before, so there may be one or two new members, but uh, here's a refresher. Um, we look at the town's year by year budget revenue, and we allocate 5% for capital um, expenditures. And this is for the non-exempt spending. Uh, we don't count the exempt portion, what's exempt, that's the part that is included in get exclusion votes. So the best example of that is the high school. Uh, a separate pool of money raised uh, by extra taxes for a specific and finite length project. Um, so back to the non-exempt portion of the budget, we asked the town department when the year begins in the summer 
you tell us about the requests for the next fiscal year um, and also for their look uh, forward to the next four years beyond that. Uh, these are all submitted to us by early September. And then we meet as a committee. We split up into our subcommittees and they meet with all the different departments. Uh, that's when we discuss the request in detail. Uh, we also talk to facilities, talk about the physical plant. Um, we have each subcommittee comes back to present to the full committee. And then we approve or not the requests. And we prioritize looking to balance spending, uh, keeping within the 5% rule over the full five year plan. Uh, we've been doing this in 1987, uh, and we've been able to adhere to the five cent rule with uh, uh, the occasional debt exclusion uh, to meet the, the town's needs. And also, having the five cent rule has been able to keep us within guardrails, not spending too little, but also not trying to uh, overburden the town with uh, debt service. Five percent has worked for the last 30 plus years, and it is very much in line with what we see at other cities and towns. Uh, I'll pause here for any questions before I turn it over to Chris. All right. All right. So uh, next slide. What is capital? Um, the committee has a specific definition, which might be a little different from what you've seen in uh, other parts of your life. Uh, it's an item that has an expected useful life of at least two years and a unit cost of $3,000. Uh, or is purchased in a program to gradually purchase a, a set of identical or nearly identical items for $25,000 or more. Um, you might think these uh, amounts are a little on the low end. Uh, they've been this way for quite a long time. We're also looking at uh, eventually making some changes there. Uh, but this is what we have for this year. Uh, a capital improvement is just adapting a capital asset to some new use or appreciably lengthening its life. Um, by, say, replacing the roof on a school. Uh, something more than just kind of ordinary maintenance. Next slide. So some examples, um, a new roof, like I just said, electric wiring, a, a new floor, new plumbing, uh, strengthening a wall by adding structural elements to it. Um, interior painting is one of our canonical examples of something that is not capital, um, unless it's part of, say, building the building, some larger project, which is capital. Um, so expenditures make it into the capital plan when they are for capital improvement, so an improvement to a capital asset, for the purchase or lease of a capital asset, or for a study or plan in preparation for the purchase or lease of a capital asset or capital. Uh, everything else should go into the operating budget. Um, and you'll see some examples as we go through tonight of things that have been kind of lurking in the capital plan for a while that aren't really capital, and we're slowly pushing them out in the operating budget as the operating budget has room to absorb them. Next slide. So we'll try this, uh, to use the right words here, and I'm one of the people who fails sometimes, but to distinguish between the capital budget for FY25, which is the thing that we're asking you to approve, and it will go to town meeting. Uh, that's where we're spending real money. We also do a five-year capital plan, which is guess. Um, things will change for sure. But we want to know that you know the big blocks are in place, and that we're not looking at some you know terrible uh, shortfall uh, in the out years. So we we go through the process of doing this plan, but we know that things will move around, costs will change, uh, etc. So um, we don't worry about whether we hit the five percent uh, limit in every single year of the out years. We only worry about it over the course of the whole plan, because in the past we found that. The, the process of moving things around to balance it year to year was sort of a silly exercise. Um, and uh, yeah, so town meeting votes to approve the plan, or, but I did it wrong already. <laughs> 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 so there are a couple of things that um, have moved a little bit this year. First of all, the one that, that I already mentioned, things are getting pushed into the operating budget where that makes sense to do. Another one, which is completely new this year, is um, most IT, IT projects these, these days are cloud-based, which means their expenses should be operating. However, when something needs to move from, say, one cloud service to another cloud service, there's often an overlap. And we've agreed as a committee to fund that expense in the overlap year only as a way to make it more, um, more tractable to switch services without a huge hit to the operating budget. Can you give me an example? Uh, an example would be, let's say, 
pick one. Um, I was going to say the, the we're one of the things that's in the budget you'll see for this year is changing the um, agendas and minutes software that the town uses on the town website to post all of our agendas and minutes. Um, that's a service that is being sunset by the, uh, the company that runs it. So we're going to have to transfer to something else. And in the overlap year, we'll probably end up paying for two services as we make that happen. And so capital's agreeing to pay for that one year of one of the services. Capital licensing and transitional costs or just licensing of the both. Yeah. Our sort of expectations that there are some overlapping of transitional costs as we move in from the old system to the new system. And yeah. That first year is the new system is just, you know, it's um, <laughs> it's ironing itself out. It's doing it for client right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to avoid disrupting the operating budget and make it easier for the town to make those kind of shifts. All right, okay. next slide. So this year we're looking at 12.4 million uh, for capital before offsets. So there are gonna be some offsets that related to other sources of money, for instance, uh, enterprise funds and 10.3 million uh, net after offsets. Uh, for the last several years, the capital plan has been felt pretty tight by which we mean that there's more stuff that seems like it's worth doing than we can actually pay for. Um, that's as usual lately due to inflation. Um, and especially inflation in um, materials and labor for building things. So capital projects tend to be more expensive every time you turn around. Um, even some projects where we thought we had enough money in last year's capital budget and then put it out to bid and whoops, we need some more. So a few things like that have happened. There's a lot of long-term cost uncertainty in the market. How much will a fire engine cost you in five years? Really hard to guess. Um, so, you know, we make a guess with some reasonable number for inflation and we hope we're reasonably right. Um, since it's just a plan, we can adjust as we, as we move along. Um, we're also, we have a lot of aging facilities in town. We're trying to do a good job on uh, maintaining and also upgrading them as we go. Um, and uh, borrowing costs are up, uh, which is great for everyone who's collecting interest and not so good for the town. That is. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to take uh, multiple approaches to bring the plan into balance. Uh, some of the notable ones here uh, are that Audison is a, oh, sorry. It's a lurking capital expense. Uh, the plan is eventually to do some sort of rebuild there, uh, but that plan has not really been uh, fleshed out since we're still finishing up the high school. Uh, we're avoiding spending uh, money on things that we were gonna not do a rebuild of Audison, we'd probably be spending money on. So the plan's getting a little bit of break right now uh, because that's not happening. Eventually, presumably the Addison project will be an exempt project, um, but remains to be seen what that really looks like. Um, as I've said before, we we're pushing operating expenses off uh, as much as we can into the operating budget. Uh, so that's cloud IT services. Uh, schools had some proposals for sort of a fund for replacing ceiling and uh, floor tiles kind of on an ad hoc basis where they were needed. That struck the committee as really an operating sort of expense. Uh, so uh, we left that off. Library asked for some painting and carpet replacement. Those are sort of our canonical examples of things that aren't capital, so we didn't do those. Uh, and the police uh, wanted uh, updates on flashlights and batons, uh, which also aren't capital by our definition, unless you find a $3,000 flashlight somewhere, uh, which I have a different problem. <laughs> so those are some examples of things that were requested that, that the committee did not uh, accept because they weren't capital. Uh, once we got the list of sort of everything that seems to the committee to be capital, we ranked them all. Each person went through a ranking exercise with, uh, and then we looked at what the committee as a whole came out with. Uh, and that caused us to make some scope reductions. We reduced funding for school front office renovations. Um, so you'll see some more detail on those renovations when we get to the schools. Um, there was a, an idea to expand Thorndike Dog Park, uh, which we removed. Uh, Robin's Library, we got some work on the entrance, including the front doors and the masonry surrounding the entrance, uh, which we did accept. There was a proposal to put in a snow melt system that cost nearly 400K, and we just decided it wasn't worth it. Um, Blue Bikes. Uh, Blue Bikes is an ongoing program. They had some out year requests for um, 
expansion, new stations with more new bikes in them. Um, they have current funding from grants and other places, uh, and the committee decided to remove that future funding, uh, waiting to see how it works. Uh, you know, does the expansion of the system and the new contract, which is anticipated next year, get us to a place where it makes sense to spend more time capital money on the system or not? Um, another one uh, is from the schools. Uh, Audison made a request to move to a one-to-one -one device program. You currently have a bring your own device optional program. And I guess there's some uh, issues in classroom discipline to say <laughs> that, that come from that program. Uh, and so they wanted to move to a one-to-one -one device program funded by the town. Uh, the cost of that was roughly 170K a year for us. And so the committee decided not to fund that. It's capital, um, but we thought it wasn't necessarily a great uh, thing to sign up for. Uh, similarly, the AHS one to one device program was initially funded by the building uh, through the, the funding for the building, and they were looking to move that onto the capital plan at about 150 a year. Um, and we also decided not to accept that. Um, doesn't mean it won't happen on either of those things. The schools will just have to find other funding to make it happen. Any questions on all that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just what you just mentioned, uh, I see you know, in the budget there's a line for Arlington High School one for yeah, the, It's a phase out. We decided to phase them out over time. So you're not. We didn't so cut them off hard. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good point. Yeah. Turn. Why do we need to do front office uh, renovations in schools that are not very old? Can I put that question off until we get to the schools? Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Next slide. All right. Alex is going to take over for a minute here and talk about capital plan progress. Sure. So, um, just going to speak to sort of some recent benefits of the capital plan um, projects that are going on around town. Um, in the library, the Robbins Library, there's been a new lighting system, um, which is sort of cut. Uh, utility bills by about 40%, um, which has been uh, a nice win. Uh, there's also a new building management system in place there to help manage that new lighting system. Um, <clears throat> we have completed last late spring, summer, um, an electrification study, which sort of is, uh, can act as a bit of a roadmap on electrifying buildings. Um, we have money on the books right now, but we're gonna wait on spinning that until, um, few more things come into focus, um, but um, we're going to meet our electrification goals as a town. We need to start getting serious about uh, figuring out a roadmap to really electrifying them. Uh, it's going to be very expensive, um, and so funding it through the traditional capital plan, that's likely going to be an issue at some point in the future. Uh, the new PPW building, Building E, which is like sort of the main building, uh, mm -hmm. is now open and functioning. Um, this has Sort of the main DPW uh, group of employees, facilities, inspections are all over there. Um, and then buildings A, F, B, C, and D are all sort of underway right now as uh, part of that project. Um, the anticipation is that we'll be closing that project out hopefully this year. Um, so more to be said later on on this. Um, community Center, um, Elevator, and HVAC, those projects are ongoing right now. Um, Number of playground upgrades that occurred, um, funded sort of by various funding mechanisms. Um, ARPA has funded a lot of our recent playground work. Um, we purchased the new Lucas system, and that's a, an automated chest compression system, um, which fire department is very, uh, really enjoys being able to have it, um, sort of saves people backs from uh, doing really vigorous CPR. Uh, they had actually a, a life save um, using this tool in December, November, December, which is uh, really great to hear. Um, for vehicle replacements, um, we have a, we're still having difficulty getting all of the vehicles we want exactly uh, on time. That seems to be, that log jam seems to be sort of releasing a little bit. And so um, we anticipate being able to purchase everything that's funded in the current year this year. Over the last few years, we've had difficulty in getting all of the vehicles that we needed. Um, in the plan for next year, we're funding almost three quarters of a million dollars in vehicle purchases. So we're requesting that. So this is a pretty significant chunk of money. Um, that's spread across nine 
sort of different vehicles within various operations. Um, school and town IT projects are ongoing. Uh, minutes and agendas, something that we'll look into redo. We have to replace our GIS system, which is uh, aging, which we're moving forward on. Um, so um, that's just all, we're always marching forward with new technology. Um, capital plan, um, some projects that are currently underway right now, Woodmore Robbins, our construction, water and sewer improvements and roadways and sidewalks. Uh, we're almost to our spring, uh, sort of our roadway construction season. So we'll be able to start opening up roads soon once the frost is no longer an issue. Um, Robbins library bathrooms, those are not really our capital project, but they are a capital project for the town. It was a CPA funded project, I believe. Um, yeah, so DPW campus, working towards it. Um, the Mystic Street Bridge is finally going out to bid um, in the next month or so. And uh, the high school, as we all know, phases one and two are now complete. We're on to phase three, which is the athletic building. And then phase four will be fields and FY one and calendar year 25. Okay, that was a lot. Um, next slide. So how the budget is formed for our capital plan. Um, Chris touched on this a little bit. What we do is we take um, our long range plan, which really guides a lot of our budgeting principles in town. And we take um, sort of as a point in time, we breathe it. Sort of, that is a dynamic document that changes as more information sort of comes to light. And so we, we take a snapshot of that. Um, this year, our pro forma number was $221 million. Um, our, uh, we adjust for exempt debt service, which is 12.5 million. Um, we adjust for all of our enterprise offsets, um, which includes water and sewer. And that brings us to $205 million budget. And 5% of that is how we determine what our budget is um, Next slide, please. You can see that sort of play out here. Um, it's probably very difficult to see from where all of you are sitting, but um, the sort of fifth line down, the first subtotal is $12.4 million. We have a whole section in red. This builds a number of different things that we sort of exclude from that 5% um, number. Um, these are various different kinds of offsets that we calculate and um, sort of pull the plan harmless from. Um, so for example, we have antenna funds, which we get certain dollars from AT&T and T-Mobile from a couple of antennas that we have around town and we contribute those towards the plan. Um, same thing for any override money that's been promised to um, specific projects in the past. So in the 2011, 2019, and most recent 2023 overrides, um, those all had specific promises made. So those are held outside of our 5% number. Um, our debt service for our ambulance, um, we, we pay specific projects down with our ambulance revenues. So we keep that outside of the 5% number. Um, and so Really what this does is it brings us down to a, a number that we as a committee aim for to get into exact balance at um, 5% for our total budget. We achieved that to within $24 in the black, which is a, quite the achievement it feels like. Um, and then we balance it over the five years also. Um, so yeah, all right, next slide please. Uh, capital funding sources. The two main funding sources that we use are cash and bonding. Um, cash. Is just money that is entirely comes out of our sort of our unallocated uh, funding. Um, we just decide to pay for something up front. Uh, we're not going to borrow for it. Bonded is anything typically that costs over a hundred thousand um, dollars. There are certain there are certain items that you cannot borrow for, um, and then we have to follow state law um, and we interface whenever we anticipate bonding something with our bond council on whether or not we are eligible to borrow for that um, item or project and for the borrowing duration that we plan for. Um, all of the borrowing durations are then baked into our capital plan and that informs our out years debt service numbers. Um, and then we have an, another funding source category called other. These are things like grants, um, chapter 90, um, user fees. So just sort of your other different smaller pots of money that we cobble together to make significant improvements. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so ARPA funded projects. Um, our ARPA spending strategy um, 
it really went into effect a couple years ago. Uh, we took two one-time $5 million revenue offsets. Um, so that was just money that came into the town's coffers um, to the tune of $10 million total dollars. That left about $25 million to be spent on ARPA eligible projects over the ensuing roughly four years. Um, all of our ARPA money needs to be tied up and uh, contracted. So it needs to be um, what the feds are calling um, encumbered. encumbered basically by the end of FY, by the end of calendar 2024. So um, this you know, late winter and into early spring, we'll be making a big push at sort of um, so out of the town manager's office and the select the benefit of the select board to um, determine what sort of the the rest of the runway for our ARPA spending is going to look like. Um, not going to make any huge wholesale changes to the plan that's been in place for years, but we do have some money that can be sort of swept into other projects and sort of reprioritized. So that money is coming, um, or that plan is coming. Um, so we're not promising any major ARPA funding into this year's capital. Um, I am going to turn it back over to team right now. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, so it's one more slide for me here at the, at the high level. We're going to give you a summary of what the acquisition expense is going to be for the FY25 budget. Uh, and that's uh, $16.1 million. That's different from the 5% number that you saw before. This is the out of pocket cost this year. So it doesn't have get service from bonds that we are newly issuing this year. Um, sorry, the 5% number that you saw before doesn't have get the Fed service from what you saw from any new bonds that we're issuing this year. It does have debt service that we, what we've uh, incurred from prior borrowing. This number doesn't have, this is what we're paying out of pocket this year. So it's going to be a portion that comes out of cash, a portion that we issue bonds for, pay for it now, and then we pay the, the bond bills later. And has the portion that's coming from other funds. And we talked about other a minute ago. Um, so this is how it breaks out. Again, $16.1 million at the bottom comes out of 16, sorry, $6.5 uh, million of bond, just under $5 million of cash, and $4.6 million of, of, of other. Almost all of the other is in public works. Um, you'll see that public works and schools together are about 80% plus of the capital budget. Um, and we wanted to give you a sense of, of what the breakout was here, but also to, to understand how we then ordered the rest of our presentation. We've done them in descending order from largest to smallest. So you'll see public works coming up next as we dive into the department by department um, parts of the presentation. One last thing I want to mention before we go on to the next slide is that um, we've tried to and emphasize that um, your vote that we're asking you to, to, to vote on and that mean to vote on the FY25 capital budget. And so whenever we show numbers for what's being spent in public works or schools or what have you, we have been tried, uh, trying to be consistent about having them show in, in black if they're FY25 to draw them to them. And during the out years, we have them in gray. So, focusing on what's actually in the budget for FY25. And if it, before we move on to the individual pieces, any questions about sort of the, the big overview? This is so, the quarter. I just want to be sure I understand this. Yep. Okay. So the other, that's like grant funding, it's not coming out of the budget. It's on our Correct. The $4,952,000 in cash is coming out of this year's budget. And then the bond coming out number, of the FY25 budget. Yes. Uh, FY25. Yes. Yeah. I'm already in it. You're already there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you've, been, you've been in that, in that as a for a while now. I've been in since June. I'm yeah. still in yeah. the I'm sure you are. Okay. Bond amount is we're going to bond that amount of money, and that's going to add something to the debt service. That'll show up next year when we, yeah. go, if we go back to uh, page 16 in the presentation. That'll show up in that non prior and prior non exempt debt service line next year. Yes. Whatever we're paying on that. Yeah, it actually shows up in its own line called new non exempt debt services right below prior. That's where Excellent. Yes. <laughs> I have 
to tell you. It has taken me 20 years to tell you membership to be able to tell you that that's how this works. <laughs> so I, I just had to do it. <laughs> Thank you. That's what worked. Yeah, it, it's basically <laughs> the the bond is um, what we're paying for with the credit card. Mm -hmm. And then we pay the credit card bill next year. Yep. And all past credit card bills next year. And, yep. and for and future years. Yes, and future years, unfortunately. And when we think about our budget for this year, it's this year's credit card bill. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. yes. Charlie? <clears throat> the uh, the uh, other bill in public works is water and sewage. Sorry? How much in $2.9 million. The three three million of the four and a half is water and sewage. Correct. Correct. And, and the rest is uh, like roads. Chapter 90. Yeah, there's about three quarters of a million that is chapter 90. Um, there's a, a portion that is from a Department of, of uh, Environmental Protection grant that will come to that in a few, in a few slides. And uh, that's the lion's share of it right there. Thank you. John, did you have a question? Yes. Um, just the, the breakout of the, uh, I guess the other, the 4.6 million, uh, is that, does that go through the, uh, the EPW's budget is that why it's all there? I'm just wondering why that's carved out in a separate dollar. No. Yeah, the other is uh, so water and sewer is almost wholly excluded from this plan. Um, in a way, we show it there as a capital number, but water and sewer, um, like their their twenty plus million dollar budget is not included in our pro forma budget, the two hundred twenty, um, and their debt service is not included in our debt service numbers. That lives almost exclusively within that area. Got it. So it's the capital capital uh, expenditures of the town, but not necessarily written from this budget. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, John. So my, just to be clear, am I reading this right? And, and next year, you're not going to use the credit card at all. Is that why the <coughs> new no. new debt service is zero? New debt service is zero because we don't issue the bond until uh, December this year, and right. the first payment doesn't come due until after the end of this year. Right. We did what's called a long first coupon. We're not going to be making uh, any new debt service payments this year. I mean, we are okay. okay. So can you sort of look at the new debt service sort of shift to left on the space? Or is that true every year? True every year. True every year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I appreciate the um, the move to move things that are not capital to bunch of budgets. And you mentioned that there are still some things that hadn't been moved. And that picky on anything. Could you give me sort of a big picture about how much you think is still not quite a capital expense? We did a, a look at that, you know, right? It was very little actually, it's still pretty much. Okay, yeah. so it's not. So about okay. $15,000 from the Yeah, minor so it, it was in like the five figures, so not, yeah. not, not much at all. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. We're almost there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's small and it's really difficult to absorb things into the operating budget. Which yeah, are so it hasn't had gross yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's just a tough thing. Yeah. Sure. Other questions so far? You know, turn it over to uh, our secretary, Joe Solomon, to talk about public works. Yeah, so the first slide here is the DPW um, new facility. As Alex mentioned, phase one of new buildings um, largely completed at this point. It's occupied by many departments. The goal is to have the project wrapped up by later this year. Um, the work is moving into older buildings. Which is, you know, focus on vehicle storage, IT offices. There's some site work around the buildings, and to date, the project is at its current budget of a little over forty-six million dollars. Um, as the work gets into older buildings, there is some expectation of minor additional costs, but there's no additional ask for money in the capital budget because that will be offset by um, essentially operating surplus that they have from unfilled headcounts. So, any questions on that project? Charlie? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Isn't this a design build uh, construction company at risk project? Yeah, it's a construction management at risk project. So, why are, why are we funding their uh, overruns through the operating book? Well, we're funding the overruns because of sort of unforeseen site conditions, which are basically the only reason why construction management at risk contracts can't grow. Um, the duration, if the duration of the project goes longer due to site conditions, which essentially seems to happen almost all the time, 
it doesn't always happen, but um, if it does happen a lot, uh, then your bottom line price tag goes up. <clears throat> they got a $10 million increase in the project costs long after they were in the project. Yeah. So they knew the site even. Yeah, they're, um, they're <laughs> discovering new things we do. It's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, but um, we're likely to be able to keep it within the sort of, without having to come back for any new money. But, but why do we sign a contract like that and not enforce it? And then we're, we're um, you know, you're saying that we have excesses in the surpluses in the operating budget. We don't have surpluses in the operating budget. We're, we're not giving services to some of the citizens, some of the citizens. I mean, we have surpluses in the DPW operating budget coming from services not being delivered or being delayed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to answer that. We are enforcing the contract fully. Um, the well, sort of it, isn't there, is not, yeah. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but isn't there a conflict between <clears throat> funding the overruns out of the operating budget and enforcing the contract for that to be the responsibility of the, of the uh, contract? Yeah, it is their responsibility. Yeah, and um, the, the town building committee that is sort of managing this project, um, they're managing it, it's sort of as best as possible. Um, and the uh, the CM at risk contract is being enforced as best as we can. Um, we're not, you know, sort of just handing over money. You know, if, if we have to get the project done as quickly as we can, uh, any overruns they have. Any cost overruns that we have to pay for have to come to some. Can, can you tell me why we have to pay for them? That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, because we find dirty dirt underground and we find problems within the walls of property. Is that a, are those things specifically excluded in the contract? Um, no, no. Okay, then I'm I'm at a loss about how we're managing this. Right. Yeah, but I think you mean they are. They are. Yes, excuse me. So cost increases that are due yeah, to right. un unseen site yeah. conditions, like the yeah. one ex the one out for the for the at risk part. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it is excluded. It, it is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. And how much money are you talking about? Uh, I think I don't know. The pendulum seems to swing weekly. Where we <laughs> <laughs> like we're over by. I if I had to place a best guess, I'd say in the low to mid six figures. Um, we've luckily had a really light winter. Um, we're likely to be able to fund this even out of snow and ice, but um, yeah, it's, um, who knows? Like last week we were 20,000 in the black. So, you know, it just, you, it, it, you don't know until you're really working on these things. Uh, we get updates weekly from our construction manager. Um, and when we, have a big overrun, we are usually able to negotiate that down to, uh, to sort of reduce our risk, um, reduce their risk, really, you know, um, and pay sort of a lower cost to move forward, if that makes sense. So questions, um, Carolyn, Annie, I'm sure. I'm a little confused why um, dirty um, dirt underneath the building was not taken into consideration before we signed a contract with them because we knew darn well that we had gas tanks under there that were there way before the current requirements and that the fact that they would likely be leaking was extremely high. Not to mention the fact that it's on the site where the old um, pollutant was. So are you telling me we set up a contract where we didn't factor that in beforehand? No, it was factored in and test pits were done as part of the um, part of the project. Uh, but I think that it's coming back worse than anticipated. It doesn't take much for it to get really bad. <laughs> so let me see if I can understand this in, in the terms in my world. You signed a contract with a certain scope. That scope included every risk and contingency that you could identify in conjunction with the construction manager who was going to take every opportunity to add to that scope, everything that you felt they could 
possibly run into a wall because they were going to be at risk. You signed that contract, and what you're discovering now are things that are legitimately outside of the scope that was agreed upon in the contract. Right. Uh, basically, I mean, um, okay. yeah, you know, it's, you can say it that way. It's like they, they, the scope, the scope remains roughly the same, but it changes over time when uh, you discover new conditions you have to deal with. Um, right. So, sort of give me an example from my world. You know, the client says we only need to move a hundred fields from this object to that object and we only need to migrate a thousand records of data and then you wake up the next morning and suddenly it's five thousand records that you found and now you go back to the client and say your scope doesn't cover that you've got to either add or you have to not move as much data or give you other examples yeah, we didn't agree to build that form we're not going to do it unless you have to go oh but it was implied by no it was no implication you had two forms listed in your i think the other thing to think about is if you ask a contractor to take on all of the risk, yeah. then they price that completely into their bid. So you want to paying the full amount regardless. So there's sort of this this point of you know, I, hopefully ideal point, but maybe not, where you sort of say, okay, we've we've asked you to take on a lot of risk, but if it's beyond that, then we have to sort of share in the risk because otherwise you're going to charge me, you know, a lot more, not just a little bit more, to to accept that sort of. Low probability, but still not zero. Risk. Right, because it's the fixed fee problem. If you tell me I have to work on a fixed fee, I'm going to double my fee. Exactly. <laughs> if you tell me I can do time and materials, you're taking the risk to the fixed longer than this. Especially yeah. if there are a lot of unknowns. Yeah, yes. there's always a lot of unknowns. And you don't want to price the 5,000 records in if you, your don't. testing shows you that I reasonably can say I only have 200. You, the client, don't. I, the <laughs> consultant, would love to price the client. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. And, and given where the client, you don't want to sign up right. for yeah. $5,000. Exactly. I remember everybody's motivations. Yes. All right. All right. Al Toxie and then Al Jones and Charles. Okay. Now this project is under the jurisdiction of the Permanent Town Building Committee. Is that yes, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the chairman of the Permanent Town Com Building Committee came before town meeting. <clears throat> With almost tears in his eyes, uh, telling about all the problems they're having with the town hall project last town meeting last the uh, spring. So it, it sounds like what you're saying here is that you won't have to come back for the perm for the uh, for this project That's to town meeting again. Great. Hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you. Going back to the construction manager risk, I assume that is a more expensive contract than just time and materials sort of thing. Yeah, is there is there any? I don't expect that answer right now, but is there any way to say, okay, we paid this premium to get the construction manager risk, and this is how much was put into that to say, in other words, to say, is it is it worth it? So, yeah, can, can we retroactively look and see what the what the insurance policy cost us? And how much that saved it. So was that a better deal or going forward? We should not do that anymore because and sell it would it be cheaper to sell it short, essentially. Yeah. I mean with you know, it's sort of like my house burned down sure. and the yeah. insurance guy says, Well, okay, but it didn't come with the roof. Yeah, we, we can like do a look back, you know. Um we're locked into this. Uh the CM at risk sort of model for these big projects is when you have a lot of unknown, you try it, you typically go with the CM at risk. And uh, it's more of a, um, when you have more unknowns, you use it. When you have less unknowns, you go with like a design, traditional design is build project. Right. So um, we had a lot of unknown. Uh, well, yeah, given where the, given those very old buildings, where it was located, what was there, yeah. all these things that we've discussed right now that um, caused cost overruns. Right. We had gone with the design, design bid build, like a more traditional build. I don't know what the cost would have been, but um, I would imagine we'd be right in the ballpark of it. But I don't. It was know. like Carolyn pointed out; everybody knew it was you know, exactly. really polluted. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, these are not stupid problem. people. But right? I, guess, I guess I would, I would, if it was possible at some point, do a look back because going forward, right. there are a lot of cases where we've decided to self-insure because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. This it feels like a form of insurance. I'm not sure mm -hmm. it's even dealing. Right. Yeah, I think it's probably there's a lot of value in doing that. Thank you. And Charlie and then Sophie. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have um, a question about 
what was just said here in this presentation about this building. I thought I heard you say that it's just about used up the $46.5 million budget. And then I also thought I heard you say that we're now starting to move into two more buildings. In, are those two buildings going to cost us nothing? Or no, we what? haven't. We are on budget. We haven't. We haven't expended all of the budget. How much so the budget has not been expended? Uh, I have to get back to you. I don't know. What can you? I can send you a report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <clears throat> What, what I am curious about is this idea of um, finding the money in the operational budget savings. So those are the budgets we review. So are you making decisions in the operations of not filling vacant positions or not doing things? And that's in the idea of keeping some money for this or? No, I mean, we would always love to have all of our Positions still, we have a huge need. It's just extremely difficult to hire, especially like especially especially for our DBW positions right now. There, are some of our very uh, our lower paying positions, it's impossible to find somebody with the CDL that'll work for twenty five bucks an hour. It just it's like really hard for them. So right. finding it's... labor. So at what point do you ask to increase the and actually fill them and then not have the money for something like this. I mean, I, it seems like a yeah, it, it, tail yeah. wagging the dog or whatever, you know, I don't know which. <laughs> yeah, um, it's very complicated. These are all collectively bargained positions. Um, we, it, it, it's a lot more difficult than just sort of like saying we're gonna add five bucks to each position because we don't have the money to do it. Um, and at what yeah. point do you just how how long until you say well, we can't fill the positions we haven't filled them the next number of years and take it out of the budget? Um, like so you're talking about like reducing like sort of head counts, right? I mean, but then you don't have the money for this. I'm just wondering at what point those just stay as we know we'll never hire. But so the, the the thing is is like the the sort of the vacancies or excess snow and ice, those are not things you plan to have, right? They're things that like, they become a funding source because they exist, not by sort of design. Um, it would be fantastic if we could have an entire workforce filled because then we could be doing all the work that we need to be doing um, instead of falling behind. And so where and so, would you get okay. the money to, if, 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 if you were at capacity and you were using all the Right, so if we were at capacity, right. Yeah, if we were at capacity, then we would have to find money elsewhere from the reserve fund transfer or town meeting. I mean, we'd have to find the money. It's not, or we'd have to, you know, cut scope. We'd have to not do one of the buildings in the project. Or snow and ice. Or snow and ice, exactly. Some of the money went from 24 unused funds, though, right? Like the 24 unused snow and ice. Does any of it come from that? Yes, that's yeah, where it so comes that's from. Current year of snow and ice. It's this year's snow and ice. The most just, right. I mean, that's an obvious, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I have Topher and then Jennifer and then Dean. Thank you, Jeff. So I was curious on the thing as well. We knew the dirt, right? We knew it was dirty. How do, the, how, do you, how do you measure that it's more dirty than the contract? <laughs> like, how is that even figured out? Like during the project? Yeah, like when they say, well, you know, you have over, you know, this is outside yeah. the scope. I mean, um, you knew I mean, it was a toxic waste now. So, right. Uh, I mean, is there to be some... honest, it's outside of my sort of sphere of knowledge. Um, you know, experts, con <clears throat> expert contractors come in and they tell you. Okay, so there's your like part, some part, you know, I'm just yeah. curious. I think it, to Annie's point, we could say there's a million square yards of dirt. Should we pay up front to remove the yeah, yeah, I'm just curious what the dirt metro or is. Yeah. okay. You know, and we're just like, is it parts familiar or some sort of like so, yeah. said, oh, we did a test pit and then it was like more polluted. Or, yeah, or is yeah. it more dirt? And maybe it's just maybe well, yeah, it's just yeah. more dirt. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole field of licensed site professionals who do this kind of work and they it's a very standard so they pretty much just process. So I, so I don't think I doubt a, that there's something funny a, going on because it's like a pretty well. You know, define a process of how you look at it. And you just you know, get a third party. Yeah. Expert. Third party expert determination.
Jennifer. Uh, yeah, so just having, um, I just posted this, sorry, but just to give you a sense of the scope, we have about 600,000 of extra money each year in the WD's budget um, because of agencies. But, but to, to, to your sort of questioning about this, um, having looked at these budgets for a while, it's not always the same issue, with maybe one exception, three times or four. But, but you'll see, you know, even from where the budget is published here and then what's going on today, there'll be new vacancies in a different position. And then a position that was vacant here has been filled. So, you know, so just sort of cutting one out wouldn't probably get the, what we need. The only exception is street numbers, I think, I, which always seems to have a vacancy for a reason, but everyone would love to fill it. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I have other questions right there. Not both. Uh, Dean. Okay. So, DPW yard projects. Project. A nice way to summarize it. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I struggle with this, okay? Because, well, the good news good news. This is the first time you've been over budget in the last four years of this project, right? It's the fourth time overall. Like, you asked for $9 million the last time. And we heard all sorts of things. And we were told that we weren't, this wasn't going to happen again. Now we're back. And so for me, it's an incredibly frustrating thing. Like, I mean, I, I struggle because we're all neighborly and friendly and friends here. So I, like, I have every note I pulled up in front of me. And I, I, I really struggle because I don't want to just read it, right? Because what we said every time, right? Like, and you know, we went to a special town meeting to deal with this. October, October 20 was the special? November of 20 was the special, 2020. It's like, this isn't a reflection. Like, this is not a good look. Like, it's just not. It's like, it's a bad look when one project, which was originally a budget. Project that was originally 29 million. $29.9 million is where it is now. Like, that's really, like, and, and what frustrates me the most is we can, we, we talked about this um, over Zoom in 2020, which was, you know, every time these projects go up, something else gets cut, right? So you look at, like, you look at a park budget, or you look at rehabilit you know, rehabbing a playground or something, and things get cut because this sinkhole is, widening it's 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 very frustrating to me like okay here we go again the w yard you know i'm, I'm not going to ask you I, I i learned not to ask if this is going to happen again <laughs> because i don't want to know it sucks so i that's why i don't i, I can't articulate anything else but saying this sucks seriously Um, Al Johnson and Charlie. Here's a softball. Uh, yeah, and, and, and maybe you'll touch on this later if this is the wrong time to ask, but um, Ryder Street. Um, I was looking at the five year plan and I see nothing to do anything with Ryder Street. I was wondering if you had any discussions or plans or if, if you're aware of anything that might be happening in Ryder Street after the new project's finished. Yeah, there's still some ongoing operations at Ryder Street. Um, I don't think there's anything to announce right now, but yeah, definitely have. Are making plans. Okay, but uh, I mean, I, I'm seeing the fine your plan, so they're just not really expensive plans. There is a secret. It's they're not developed yet. I mean, we can't okay. ask for something that we don't know about yet. Okay, great. Thank you. But, but it is being thought of. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, we have operations that are continuing there every day. Cool. Yeah. Swap ship, right? Yeah, well, plus, I mean, there are vehicles that operate in and out of there every day still. So, yeah. I mean, the, the Navigate yeah. site. It seems like a good asset, but I, don't, I just don't want it to just decay. Yeah, yeah. It will not. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Charlie, then Michael, then Dean. So, uh, awesome. thank you for being down here. I, I, uh, first of all, I want to say that the committee at large, that the Capital Planning uh, Committee is not managing this project. So, Great. these issues, uh, you know, while this is a good opportunity, especially for me to vent frustration, uh, it's not their problem. They, they've been doing their, their job. 
However, I, I think it would be appropriate, and I don't know how the chair would consider doing this, but I think we should ask for a complete and detailed report, financial report on the status of this project and how it got to this point. Because I'm not happy with the fact that we're <clears throat> we're clearly uh, behind in, in our funding of or, or somehow misrepresenting the funds of the operating side of the DPW budget in order to fund the overruns on this capital project. And and I think that's the town management problem and we need to get to the bottom of it. And the report is from the building committee? I, I, it's from the town manager or the current town building committee. I don't know, but I think the committee ought to be requiring that. That's my recommendation. Michael. Chris, the um, $75,000 for uh, this year's uh, request plus three more years out for town hall renovations. Uh, is that connected to, to the roof and the hole therein? Or is that something else? Uh, we'll get to that uh, soon, but yes, it's okay. connected to all the many things that are falling apart at Town Hall. Uh, but the hole in the roof is one of the primary recipients of that money uh, short term. Department heads put together their wish lists and, and the requests come up and eventually are, are, are judged and graded. And did anybody in the last couple of years say, hey, you know, I think the Town Hall roof is leaking? Town Hall has been programmed for about $75,000 in small capital repairs uh, every year for quite a while. Um, okay. Even though we have studies about what needs to be done to the envelope of the building that, that show there's a lot of need there. Uh, it's just not something that uh, has been proposed for an actual project yet. Um, it's, so it's piecemeal stuff, bathrooms here and there, uh, dealing with the clock tower, things like that. Yeah, this, this last year it went from piecemeal to Oh my God, blue tarps and yeah, yeah. You know the, the ceiling below is collapsing. It, and my list of capital nightmares, uh, Town Hall, is pretty high up there, yeah. along with us and a few other things. <laughs> uh, and those are things that you know we don't really know the scope of yet. We just know that they're big and good there. All right, um, Dean, and then Jennifer. Questions on the DPW project? And then oh, no, I have one. DPW general. Dean. But I'll wait now. I have something with DPW general. I can wait. We're going to keep going on the DPW? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> Next slide. Um, another area we talked about is roads and sidewalks. Um, over the coming five years, there's an average of just over $2 million per year for roadways. Um, the last study we have is from 2019 that recommends that level of spend to maintain the, the current quality at, at an 80 out of 100 score. Um, obviously, there's been some inflation since then. The next report will be prepared in time for the next capital cycle to give us a new target, which we can use in, in our planning. Um, one of the larger roadway projects that's coming up, um, and it's uh, uh, not all roadway funding, but about $550,000 to address Park Avenue as a corridor um, in FY25, a large majority of that is engineering and design work um, and specific to roadways, there's $175,000 of that $2 million per, per year average roadway money uh, for roadway construction work. Um, in the out years, there's additional funding to support this and it will transition away from design and more into construction work. Any questions on that before I go to sidewalks? Yes. Caroline? Um, putting it politely, I think the condition of our roads in Arlington has degraded considerably over the last five to eight years. And um, that may be because of cost escalation, uh, maybe because the infrastructure, people like uh, National Grid or whoever up the streets doesn't repair them correctly. But I think I think we're giving Belmont a good run for the money and just got the word <laughs> broke. And well it's a serious problem. And I think you know strategically one of the things we have to consider here is we put hundreds of millions of dollars into our school infrastructure and we've neglected streets and sidewalks. And um, somehow that 
that imbalance needs to be considered. Um, and, and, you know, I, I've been behind some of those hundreds of millions under the school side, so don't, I'm not trying to say that uh, my hands are clean, but uh, the situation that we have with the roads getting serious, is serious and is getting worse. So I don't know how the Capital Planning Committee thinks it's going to address that, or if you have addressed it. Yeah, I mean, I can walk the, the approach is on a five year cycle. The town hires a consultant who goes out and creates a, a PCI score. So for roadway segments, they'll determine where it is. And then as an asset, a roadway in terms of the, the replacement and repair costs isn't it, it doesn't degrade linear linearly. Um, if you take care of it with sort of lighter treatments more regularly the quality of the road can be maintained. So your score will be maintained at a, a more acceptable level. If you wholly neglect the road, it starts to really accelerate down a curve where the work required to repair the road becomes, I need to dig up the whole thing and rebuild it again. So you're talking about, you know, one to $2 per yard going up to, you know, 20 to 30, right? Very serious difference. What the town does is they take the report that's done every five years they take that data, they put it into a program, and the program gives them, based on the town saying, I have X dollars, it says, here's where you need to make repairs to minimize the degradation of the system as a whole. So our approach has been, and, and this is sort of the first cycle through it, is to, to get that data to understand what the report says, and it says to, to maintain spend X and try to get close to that so that we stay away from that other end of the cost curve where this just spirals and, and becomes untenable in terms of cost to repair. And in terms of what we've done on the capital plan in the last three years or so, it's we've been notching up the amount of the total amount available to spend on both roadways and sidewalks. I realize that. Um, so we are now at the point where we're essentially meeting the goal offered to us five years ago. Um, better than we were, uh, still not probably where we need. And, and how do we solve the problem? I mean, don't we have to put more money into the roads? This is not a, an, a unique problem that Arlington faces. It, it's sort of maybe a discussion for another time about how much does it cost to maintain a road system? And is it something that uh, uh, a municipality should take on? Should the state maybe provide more Chapter 90 funding? When I was in my first year trying to learn about this, I searched Chapter 90 funding and road condition. Every town is going to the state saying, you don't give me enough to maintain my roads. Right? It, it's, it may not be a problem that is going to be solved at a, at a capital funding level, but I, I don't think we want to let it get away from ourselves. So we're, we're trying to get close and trying to make sure we maintain it as best as possible. But... I, what was it? It was to get from a 79 or 78 to an 80, we needed to spend an extra quarter million dollars per year. So to be B minus students, essentially, we would we would be, you know, giving up two police cars every year forever, right? It, it's a lot of money to, to just maintain it. So for yeah, so question on this. Um, so when National Grid comes and tears up the roads with the asphalt and things like that, and they patch it, but do they then, who's responsible for really fixing it at that point? Like once they're done with everything and the major done and all that, do they come back and repave it or does? Yeah, they come back and repave it. Depending on when it is, they do a temporary or permanent and then. But they eventually get to a permanent? They eventually get to a permanent. Okay. We, it's on now. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think we also want us to inspect and finish that. Right. Don't we also limit their um, ability to dig up roads when we freshly? Right. If there's something that's been like freshly paved, we, uh, unless it's an emergency, we won't sign off on work for And we try to find efficiencies where, you know, if a road's open that we're doing other do sub training. So it's easier to have them done, though, the line that kind of thing. Okay, on the sidewalks? Yes, so sidewalks are a little bit over $1 million per year over the five-year plan. Um, the 
the data here is from 2015, a little bit older, but it just looked at the entire system and said, at this point in time, you've got about a $26 million backlog of work to address um, quite a variety of deficiencies. And again, this isn't, the backlog doesn't get you to perfect. It gets you to the point where really your sidewalks are fair plus, fair, good, excellent. Um, and as Alex mentioned earlier, there was a recent override geared towards mobility improvements, um, $200,000 per year. What we do is we carry that 200,000 and then each year that goes up by two and a half percent in perpetuity. Um, and there's a, a few examples of some of the FY25 projects that'll be supported by that. So any questions on sidewalks or the overhead? Yeah, so this is, I think, maintaining our current sidewalks. Or does this take into account adding sidewalks? There are places in town that don't have sidewalks. Um, How does that handle yeah. it? It's at the discretion of the DPW. Um, what would be this budget? Yeah, yeah, it would come out. And that's right. But you're saying at this point, this is just a huge backlog. It's maybe it's moved, but this sounds like this is funding maintaining what we have. Not necessarily. So, sidewalks don't really degrade aggressively. Um, what EPW has said is they use sort of a, a few layers of data looking at, you know, areas that tend to have higher pedestrian traffic, areas that tend to come up on equity surveys. Um, they use data to find hotspots where they need to increase the quality or maintain sidewalk infrastructure and that guides their spending of, of this budget here. I mean, I do see something missing sidewalks. I see 50% of the sidewalks are fair functions. Yeah. So this is at the discretion of the DPW. Yeah, but but it, it is driven by a, a data-driven program. Right, yeah. 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 There's also at dealing with accessibility issues because that's like their number one priority is adding or upgrading uh, ramps at the corners. Yeah, the, are you picking up a little yellow? Yeah, yeah. We use CDBG funds for that too, but yeah, it's not it's not enough. I mean, eventually they'll get them all, but then no, I understand. Then the accessibility chain standards change. Yes, <laughs> yeah. um, So they did actually just add a bunch of sidewalks in my neighborhood. Major access to parking arise, and that was in the budget, as I understand. Yep. Um, so the question: So the um, Sidewalk and street money that are listed here, does that include chapter 90 money or chapter 90 money sit on top of this? It, it includes it. It includes it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I'm also really excited about the Flash and Beacons in front of the Robbins Library. I'm also really excited about something that DPW has been doing in their um, operating expense, which is doing something that the university's done for years, which is sidewalk shading. So that when you see, you know, there's a sidewalk that's off here, they shave off the top so it's it's just not as much of a thing. I feel like we're making some improvements. Yes, concrete or asphalt? Um, the concrete. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. We finally started doing it. So this uh, starting last year. Um, can I ask just one question that's oh, just a little ahead, just so I don't keep raising my hand, which is I'm just I didn't get a clear answer from Mike. Um, the seven hundred fifty thousand for toters. Um, if if we do not go for this grant, we have to pay an additional seven hundred fifty. Is that true? Is that the amount? The next slide. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, so, I didn't want to keep raising my hand, so I, that's a question okay. I want. Okay. Before we go, Grant, do you have a question on sidewalk? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Manager. Um, I don't envy any of your work, by the way. I think that you guys do a great job. Um, did 26.1 million backlog. Um, how much of that are we uh, um, getting rid of per year? Uh, about 1.04 million. <laughs> <laughs> about yeah. a million backlog it, it, is coming up. Is it growing or is it is the backlog decreasing? Well, a lot of backlog yeah. is missing sidelines, right? Yeah. Well, it, it's a wide variety. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, it, it, again, so a sidewalk. When I when I read the 2015 report, really, it's things like tree roots, which will actually physically right. destroy the sidewalk. Yeah. Other than that, once you put 
a concrete sidewalk in, if you, you know, mix the concrete and pour it the right way, it's kind of, you're good for a while. Um, so I, I, when I talked about the roads and how they degrade and get to that, but that, that isn't the characteristic that you see in the sidewalk. That saying like $26.1 million backlog at a million dollars a year, like none of us are going to be sitting here doing this when, when we solve the problem. So, you know, similar to, oh my God, the roads, what are we going to do? Like it, it, it does feel like quite a big lift to, to address. Um, so we're, um, not really progressing. Uh, well, we don't. I, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, the question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say we are progressing, and it may not look overwhelming because we're progressing at about a million dollars of spend per year okay. against a multi tens of million dollar target. Sure, yeah. sure. And again, like Alan mentioned, some stuff gets added, but maybe not more than, doesn't, never more than a million a year additional stuff. So we're going to somehow make it make in, in roads. Uh, inroads on the back. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So that twenty-six million dollar backlog that includes places where there's no sidewalks. I assume it excludes private ways. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. check it. Yeah. Yes. Coders. Please. Yep. Coders. Um. So I would start with your question. There's a million and a half in the budget, okay. of which 750 is assumed a grant would cover. Okay. Um, so, so that's where you see there's 750 and other covered by other incentives and drive on. Um, so this is to a requirement of the pending renewal of the contract. So there's a world where under the bid, it could go away. Um, uh, but right now, this is to supply every home with a recycling and a trash decoder to cut down on the um, labor cost of our uh, trash program. But could we get grants in for that? Was that a grant? Um, the five year plan of 750,000 for tenders and 750,000 for voters to random. Is, is that missing a minus sign? Maybe? No, it's a one and a half million dollar project. So 750 would be sort of like our expense, and 750 is like sort of grant cover. Okay. But it's to represent the total cost. I'd just like to add to this that um, there are, there is, like David said, there's a world in which this becomes very advantageous to us. If we do not arrive at that world, then we could sweep this money and not buy the toters. But um, this is a, as I know that you are all very well aware, that this is a looming problem for us, um, is trash and recycling. Um, a lot of the haulers these days want you to move to something that they can use their robotic arms to, you know, to remove the waste from your house. Um, so having these uniform toters would allow for that kind of an operation. Who knows when we go out to, you know, when we issue an RFP on this, like who's going to respond and how they're going to respond. It may not require this and it may not become a thing. We have to reserve, well, we feel like we have to reserve this in our plan in order to potentially land an, an advantageous contract. It's going to be really, I think, very expensive either way. Uh -huh. Oh, good. You're going to talk about, okay, I channeled you the other night. It seems like a, maybe a good opportunity to consider pay as you throw up. This is definitely an opportunity to do that. Um, part of the $750,000 grant broken into two grants because we're looking at sort of two different toters, a larger recycling toter and then a smaller trash toter. Um, with a smaller trash toter comes a almost a forced change in behavior for residents. If you only have a finite number, uh, you know, number of gallons of trash, you would have to either purchase excess bags or another toter or something along those lines. And so um, that is sort of where the sort of calculus comes in, whether this is advantageous to us as a town or not. So we don't know yet. This is still being sort of discussed and uh, negotiated. Like, well, not even negotiated yet. It's being discussed and sort of like conceived at the, with the town manager and the DBW director, um, along with sort of a number of different um, people are talking right now to try to figure out what's the best way to move forward. Uh, so this conceivably could involve a 
pay-as-you-throw model. Um, really what that would do is it would shift a lot of these excess costs onto sort of like your user base who are using it more. So they use more and they pay for more. Or like more so a basic level of service and then anyone who produces a ton of extra waste, then they are going to have to pay for it a little extra. It just seems like the, yeah, going to others requires a fair behavioral change. Yeah. So it would be a good time to right. mold that out. Right. How much? How much are those toters if a resident were to buy, need to buy one? I think that that would be it would depend on the contract. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I have had to replace half dozen yeah. recycling bins because of the treatment mm -hmm. that they get. They get tossed so, around. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, or I, happen to, completely. I happen to have these exact toters, like the toters that are pictured. I don't know what we land on, and they cost me about sixty to seventy bucks each. And so how does this work with parked cars? Yeah, so there would be requirements on how, where you would be able to place your trash can. Um, it would have to allow for access for this robotic arm. And I don't, I don't know the sort of specifics of that, but there are countless communities that are dense and denser than Arlington that do this. So I'm sure that there are ways to make it work, but I don't know, I don't know what the specifics are. So, um, when you say depending on which size toters are ultimately selected, so we would have to choose the right size toters to be eligible for the grant. Right. So, um, a the DEP is calling for a thirty-two gallon size trash toter, which is small. It's like a little bit bigger than your sort of normal round trash can, you know, like curbside one. Um, and so. The recycling cans are 64 gallons, so they're you know, double that. And they're bigger. And so that's kind of like the that's the like base level that you can qualify into the DEP granting program. And have you looked around at all at sort of like how much most people are growing out? Yeah. And Waste uh, tonnage likely isn't going to change much. Okay. Because I'm far away less than 32 gallons, so that would be fine. But there's there's Right. right, and it's hard to do this on like a micro level. Um, we can look at it at like sort of we track this by like when um, the trash goes to the incinerator, recycler, or recycling goes to the plant. Um, so I, I don't know if it's easy to track on a per household basis, but we can spread it across all of our households and find this level of the, the 32 gallon would suffice. But there are, you know, every household is different. Like, I, I have six people who live in my house, and so we're going to produce a lot more waste than two people, you know, so it's stuff like that. Yeah, I'll make you deal with it. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. That's what we need. Sell your fat woods. Al Tosti and then Topher and then Charles. Is there any other urban areas near us where this, uh, these toters are used? It, it, I, I mean, I've seen these used in a lot of places, but the ones I've seen them used are in suburban areas where people usually don't park on the street. Uh, here, yeah. people park on the street a lot, and if they, if they park in front of your trash cans or your toters, mm -hmm. they, the truck can't get to them. Right? I live, so I lived in Medford, um, and we had these for trash and recycling. Um, yard waste was not one of the toters, but we had, it was just like this program, and I lived in two family in a neighborhood full of two families. It was very dense. It was mostly street parking, and that was how we got rid of our waste there. And it worked like completely fine there. But um, so Medford uses this for trash. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They put them on the street, basically. Yeah, you put them like right yeah, against the curb on the street. Yeah. All right, Topher. Yeah. Okay, uh, Charlie. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions on toters? All right. Next slide. Um, and then this is a more granular view of what we we're showing earlier, um, or slightly a pivot of what we were showing earlier on how the DPW breaks out against general and vehicles, and then um, this this coming year versus the out years. Um, the administration line you see the seven fifty is or the one one point five is the toters, um, and then. Uh, within the highway and the water and sewers, where you see most of the rest of the four and a half million of other. Um, and across the five years, we're 
at 39 million of total spend within DPW, not net of the assets. Okay, there we go on to one question. Yeah. Um, maybe not the right time, but it's right here. So the water and sewer is uh, dear to my heart. Uh, <laughs> and it's dear to our heart that it's dear to his. <laughs> yeah, it's 2.9 million. And um, it's all under other, right? Uh, and so I think I just want to verify this. So um, 901.5, that's uh, MWRA is the other, I believe, right? That's the stuff we asked for town meeting. And then we have the 450 for drainage rehab and 50 for hydrant and water replacement. Are those the separate bonds that get quoted? Is that how that gets financed? Is that the, um, is that why they're on no, I'm not entirely certain how we're financing those next year, but um, yeah, we will borrow for them. We have we keep some we do fund some things out of the water and sewers operating budget, but I think we find it almost all but, but they they'll come from the water sewer enterprise fund in the end. So they don't affect this plan, but right. It, that lives outside of this plan essentially. Okay, so they come from the enterprise. Right, yeah. Right. They live the, whether they're bonded and then the bonds are paid from the bonds or paid well, so they're not under bond, that's why no, but, yeah, correct. They're actually in the, the regular water sewer budget. And okay. that, that can be a little confusing because they are displayed here and we also show them in the operating budget of water and sewer. But well, it's just I, for transparency purposes. I wouldn't call it the operating portion of the budget. But portion of the budget, budget. Okay. yeah. To the debt sewer service portion. Yeah. But okay, so they're non aren't the uh, non MWRA and they're um, just funded from the uh, retained earnings or so from the from the fund balance. Okay. okay. Thank you. John, uh, it's keeping track of the numbers. So uh, I, I had asked earlier about the four six, the four point six million, the other that was primarily for public works. Is that four point six million here on this slide as well? And I'm just wondering, would you like basically like the first four lines, like one point five million? Um, it's water sewer, the water sewer line, a portion of highway, and a portion of the half of the administration. So the 4.6 is kind of a subset of that 7.7 .7 million. I mean, we don't have to get back, but it's yeah. easy. Yeah. I can uh, I'll give you a cheat sheet. Yeah, got it. And actually, real quick follow up on that. The debt service on, you know, whatever, the 4.6 million, you know, I guess the 7.7 .7 million, the debt service on that, does that go through the DPW budget? The water, no, the water sewer, sewer. No, it lives in the water and sewer budget. But uh, it means a non -water sewer. Yeah, like yeah, and again, I, I see two point nine for water sewer, but so I assume there's a good chunk that is non water sewer. Does that debt service go through the DPW's budget? I'm just curious because it doesn't go through your budget. So it, it shows up as it's, previously it's, bonded and it's capital. Budget. Yeah, it lives in the capital plan. It's previously bonded. Uh, previous, so it comes through as an expense, but right. it doesn't get. We just, like we we bundle all of the prior prior issues. Uh, exempt and not exempt debt. We have those as their own lines within the plan. So it comes through as like uh, prior non exempt debt service, it's kind of baked into those numbers. Right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And so then anything that we buy in this plan yeah. shows up in the line labeled new non exempt debt service. Yeah. So it, it could be complicated, but I feel like then the DPW expenses do go through your budget. If you guys are paying the debt service, then you're paying for it. They go through our budget, they're not in a separate DPW budget, which is what I thought we were answering. I mean, we didn't answer it clearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, real quick. So, the, um, the 4617, which was DPW, and you, you're showing what, like, what, what's a capital expenditure for you for the capital planning, then you had a current expense for the uh, capital planning, then you had other, and the other was 4.6 million. Yeah. And I said, um, so those are capital expenses, but you know, generally they're DPW, they're not going through your committee. I, I, I probably didn't ask it clearly, you guys said yes. But now, and I'm learning, but now it sounds like you guys actually do pay the debt service on that, on that, those amounts. Yeah, anything. Yeah, not on so, the other funded things. You right. don't pay the debt service. So if you look, yeah. let's go to page 19, yeah. <laughs> slide 19. Um, under public works, which is the top row there, yeah. you see different funding categories, bond, cash, and other. 
So there's about 1.1 million that we plan, uh, of FY25 expenses that we're planning to issue bonds for, and it will be paid for under the line that's labeled new non-exempt debt service in the capital budget in future in future years capital budgets. So that's how you can see where those that money comes from. There's cash, which is paid for in this year's capital budget, and there's other, which is paid by some source outside the capital budget. In this case, the water sewer, sewer enterprise fund is the majority of it. Uh, the DEP grant is another chunk of it, uh, the, the anticipated DEP grant. Yeah. It's um, not a long list, so we can just go through it very quickly. So, that's true. Yeah. so of the 4.5, it's 750 is the half of the totals that we expect a grant for. Um, there's 10 grand for headstone cleaning, which comes from the cemetery. There's 760 in roadway, there's 125 in the um, roadway. Ramp. What kind of that? The CBG? 760 in Top 90 in CBG 125. And then the 2.9 that's public, uh, that's water and sewer, 450 for drainage rehab. Um, that comes from the enterprise fund, 50 grand that comes from the enterprise fund for hydrant valve, hydrant and valve replacement, 900 that someone previously referenced for the sewer system rehab, and 1.5 for water equipment. And those are both in those and the last two. So there's yeah. it's, it's not bonded with other funding. Yeah, no, I think yeah. so. The other is truly other, like really, mm -hmm. it's like they're not just part of the mill. Thank you very much. All right. High school. Okay. Um, our other NAPA building project in town, uh, the Arlington High School, um, which I'm happy to report is on time right now and on budget right now. Um, phase two uh, of this, which was sort of the, uh, the central spine, which is like the big middle section of the school, um, along with sort of a bunch of other uh, peripheral buildings, Sort of a major portion of the project was completed in December 2023 and it's open and functioning now. It's fantastic. If you haven't been there, I would encourage you all to go visit it. It's beautiful. Um, currently working on demolition and um, sort of staging for construction for the athletic wing, which is taking place this year, um, calendar year 2024, and then fields, uh, so athletic fields and completes. <laughs> right, that's that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, fields and sort of um, big finished site work um, will be taking place in 2025. Um, yeah, so moving right along, there's a very uh, robust process surrounding that because it's an MSBA project. Uh, there's a school building committee and then a number of uh, rather involved subcommittees that um, are managing that project at a bunch of different levels. Um, Happy to field any questions on this one. Any questions on this one, Carolyn? So the the picture you just held up, um, he held up the one that the very oldest building is taken mm -hmm. down. But the other two buildings from the seventies, I think, that are closest to the athletic field, those are going to come down. Yes. Yeah. Those are part of the athletic. That's like this year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, yeah. So, do you think of the high schools being a great big H? There's one bar of the age that's not there yet. That's the part that's the big hole in the ground that's going to be the athletic wing. And then these old buildings here will become fields because basically the entire high school sort of marched forward toward the street and lost some lawn and the space in the back becomes more field. Which is great because that's also a fun point. That's nice to do for the fields. Any more questions on the high school? All right. I'm assigned to represent our biggest customer, the school department. Um, I'm going to try to be convincing and hopefully you will endorse it for the kids. <laughs> even, <laughs> even when I tell you that we plan on spending around $4.6 million in fiscal year 25 and 20, around $12 million over the course of the next five years. Most projects are funded with debt because they relate, they relate to building innovation and upgrades. And our largest projects in this plan are Bishop and Hardy for approximately $7 million. 
Bishop, we plan on spending $2.8 million in 24, the current year and fiscal year 25. We've already appropriated 1.5, 1.6 for the roof replacement and fiscal year 24. We have the design complete and it is scheduled to go to bid this month. Um, we're gonna need $500,000 for envelope repairs to resolve the water penetration. Um, we've completed a visual survey. Uh, the work is scheduled to start in April. Uh, and this is because we have active leak, uh, leaks and damaged doors. There will be sealing um, of the windows, uh, replacing the frames, glazing the windows, replacing doors. Uh, once we're done with the roof replacement, we would like to have solar arrays. Uh, the cost is $348,000. The useful life is 20 years. And we hope to um, have a payback of seven years. This payback is realized via rebates and also energy savings from uh, monthly bills. Um, the school department would also like to have a reconfiguration of the uh, front office. Their initial request was $500,000, but we brought it down to $350,000. We requested to adjust the scope. Uh, they want to add two offices, one for the assistant principal, who's currently uh, working from a closet, <laughs> and also a social worker. Uh, these people need... Um, space for confidential meetings. Um, this is a lot of work and would involve moving the walls, the PA system, the electrical, plumbing, and um, IT wiring, and so on. Um, it also, it will also enhance, help me out with this word, the vestibules, vestibules, vestibules security, and they will be able to lock someone in in case they have an emergency. Then moving on to Hardy, this is a bigger project. Uh, we need um, around $4 million between fiscal year 23 and fiscal year 26. We've already appropriated in fiscal year 23, 400,000 for the roof replacement, but the bids came back really high. So we're gonna need another 600,000 in fiscal year 25. The design, complete, uh, the design work is complete and is gonna go to bid this month. Um, Envelope repairs, this is a much larger scope than the Bishop. It's gonna cost us $2.2 million for windows and masonry. Um, they completed the visual design. We don't have the written design yet. Um, it all, it's gonna, this project is really gonna replace almost all the windows and the doors at this, at the, at this school. And also the external part of roof parapets. They will replace the broken bricks, repoint, and waterproof. And finally, when we're done with the roof, uh, we would like to install solar ar arrays. The payback for this ones are six years and the useful life is the same as uh, the other ones, 20 years. Any questions, Carolyn? Does anyone know when the last time those windows were replaced? The party? Yeah. Party was uh, re was last renovated in 2001. Okay, over 30 years. Charlie? <clears throat> on the Hardy School, it says on the top $4 million. Um, and uh, the, the, as I add up the mm -hmm. items that come to uh, 3.4 million, is there 600,000 missing or something? One. Did I add one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three, four, I have three point eight. Like three point four three. Just Miss 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 Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Google numbers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Josh. Um, you mentioned the HVAC at some point. Is there, are, is there 
Does this include um, air conditioning at either of these schools or uh, just don't restrict that somewhere else? I'll get to the HVACs that. and our, our keys. Uh, Back in me one. Keep going. Yeah. 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 Okay. So during this project, I've learned that since I'm not good with numbers, I should move into the HVAC business <laughs> because they're so expensive. Um, and I'll tell you with a little concern. So we plan on replacing rooftop units, RTUs. These are part of the HVAC. So the HVAC has AC, ventilation, and heat. The rooftop units have some of the compressor, um, the coils, and the fan in a box outside the building. Um, they're roughly $150,000 per RTU. We plan on changing the RTUs of five schools. Um, Hardy alone needs 11 RTUs. <coughs> now, this looks like a lot of money, but uh, believe it or not, we still have, in addition to this 1.4, we've also um, appropriated about 1.3 from ARPA in fiscal year 24. So it adds up a lot from the HVACs. Um, the elevators need to be replaced. We have to replace four elevators. Um, they're at the end of life, and some of them are beyond the life expectancies. We don't have parts for them anymore, so we cannot fix them. We just have to replace the whole unit. And the facilities director thinks that they're going to fail the state inspection. So this are a must. Is there one elevator per school? Um, one at Pierce and one at Dallin. Oh, I don't know. Oh, in each school, I have so, no idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's 250 each. Um, and how many gallons? One at Pierce. So in fiscal year 26, we're going to replace Pierce and Dallin for $100,000 to 50 each. And in fiscal year 28, we'll replace Hardy and Stratton and at 250 each. Pierce is three stories, Dallin is two. Yeah. Hardy is three. Is this a, a safety issue? I mean, yes, it could be a, a, an it, FY25 expense rather than a 26 expense. He said that he can suck up some blood. I don't know. Yeah. Facilities well, we that we, we pushed true. that because they came with a big list. Questions? And so uh, the, the RTUs on the schools. Are those buildings electrified or not electrified yet? They're not. No, they're not yet. They're not. They're not. So we we're replacing units <clears throat> that are feeding the fossil fuel system, a non-electric fossil fuel system. Correct. Right. Yeah. And what would it cost to instead just there's a rough number for electrifying whole school, it's around ten million dollars a school. Well, how about just electrifying heat and cooling? Uh, it's a, I think it's a pretty big portion of the of that tenure. Okay, so we, we really need to do this because we're not doing. We're not doing the well. We can't afford to do the ten million dollar project, and so this is the way to keep our you know, students comfortable. Right. It's ten million dollars per building. That's kind of the arena that we're looking at. So hopefully, we cost ten million. Josh, can you follow up on my other question? I didn't think the schools were generally air conditioned, are they? Like the players or just the media center or some are in the yeah. office. So, so I mean they I want to put like, AC, they're gonna put AC at Thompson. Like all the classrooms and everything. Um and can't do not the can't hear things like that. There's some there are there's some there are some spaces in the schools that aren't uh, they'll have like uh HVACs that have some certain rooms in some schools. Thompson, yeah. for example, bacteria is a That's what my name is. Yeah, I kind of asked this right. question 15 years ago when they were rebuilding. It like, seems like there could be more and more need for air conditioning during the school year. Would we think about fighting the bullet in that? Doing that it's going to cost you know, three times as much. For the next 10 years. By biting the bullet, you mean 
electrifying well, this I don't know. Just again, again like it would be, if we'd done it 15 years ago when we rebuilt the school, it probably would have added a million dollars to the six million dollar price tag for vision. Now it's going to add 10 million, and if we wait another five or 10 years, maybe it's going to add 20 million. I mean, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious. Seems like it could be on the horizon one of the roads. <clears throat> It's such a big project that it really doesn't fit in a capital plan. Uh -huh. So we would have to figure out, you know, especially if we're going to march through all the schools, uh, electrifying them, um, how is that going to be funded? Um, yeah. So, uh, Facility Director uh, Rob's um, understanding, just is this part of yours as well, was that the ARPA money <clears throat> would be used to study the issue, right? And then to see. How much it's going to cost to add in a school and what that's going to look like and what's the difference between electrification versus non? Does that sound right? It was, we had an allocation from the ARPA to do the design of yeah. this um, eight backs at the schools, but we've also had appropriations for from ARPA for Thompson. Okay, for so we don't have to for money. For, right, okay. yeah, okay. yes, okay. yes, yes, for each school. So okay. that was additional. The ARPA carried a portion of the cost. Well, and the capital carries minutes. a portion, yes. Mm -hmm. And now we're discussing only whatever the capital carries. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Captain Bobby. I go back one. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't finish the right. Yeah, we're missing. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the Stratton, they need to uh, do the lobby reconfigura reconfiguration at Stratton. I know that this is a relatively new school, but mm -hmm. the school the school added um, new positions. Um, same thing, they need two offices for the assistant principal and for the social worker because they have confidential meetings, especially the social worker. Uh, needs privacy to discuss IEP plans. There's actually even legal documents when it comes to IEP. Um, so this is necessary to um, add additional space. Um, they they plan on re uh, uh, reconfiguring the lobby, the workroom where they have the printers, and also the um, waiting room for the nurse. And. Gives additional classrooms. This is $350,000. We appropriated last year $100,000. And they need an additional two hundred and fifty dollars this year. They want to convert the mezzanine into three classrooms. Right now, they have uh, they teach classes in an open space. And they need to accommodate the fluctuating waves of kids. So um, they need additional classrooms. Uh, they have to be ADA compliance, so they have to, it's a complex project, that's why it came up a lot more, because they have to move the wheelchair elevator and add extra stairs next to the elevator to be part of the code, for, for ADA code. Um, they also gonna have to do HVAC changes and all other auxiliary uh, adjustments like wire, fire, plumbing, PA, and so on. Questions on that? Charlie? Has the Capital Planning Committee had a <clears throat> serious discussion with the school department over their demographic projections for the next uh, five or 10 years? Um, my recollection is that our student population is just about at its peak and it's going down, and the drop in population is going to hit the grade schools before it hits the higher, I mean, hit the, hit the lower elementary class classes before it hits the high school. And and uh, we're this is talking about expanding classrooms and making investments in these schools, which maybe in five years um, they're not going to need. I, I'm just asking about yes. how, how much the demographics have been examined by the capital. My understanding is that Gibbs is um, the the pig in the python, the, the bulge is um, hitting Gibbs. And that's why we need these additional classrooms now. Because there's but only one. You won't get six. them now. And they're not going to be ready for two years, three years. This is the only school that has sixth grade, right? Because all yeah. the sixth grade kids yeah. go to that room. So this was based on their study. They anticipated that they're going to have a 
wave of students that need to be accommodated at that school. What's going to happen beyond this? That we don't know. But when the kids show up to work, I guess they need classroom to uh, show Charlie, up to school. <laughs> <they need laughs> to might be a timing <laughs> question: whether these classrooms were ready in time for those kids. Yeah, that right? I mean, there are other solutions that you can can have here. Sure. Yeah. I'm just, I just don't, haven't looked at them. I, I know that the, the demographics that I saw are, for, there's a couple of different uh, projections, but they're all going down. And, and uh, generally speaking, the, you know, the bulges go up into the higher grades and the lower grades down below populations. And then that sort of rolls through the whole school system. So I'm just asking the question whether these have been examined Challenged, in other words. We examined is the point word. <laughs> we didn't necessarily challenge them. No. Um, we assume <clears throat> that the data they're giving us is accurate. Um, we didn't audit it, per se. Um, but we can do that. We can have a discussion and find out if it's really going to be an influx. We're not qualified to, to, you know. Challenge their demographic projections. But they gave you demographic projections. We have the assertion that there's a bulge coming to hit to, be, to give school, and, and then the timing of that bulge is needed, is why we have to address it with the additional classrooms. And I do believe what you're saying, Charlie, current projections are that that bulge will roll on through and will hit uh, this, and it will hit AHS. And in the meantime, there's a trough coming um, in the lower grades of the elementary schools. So, looking at it right now, um, so I would say this: um, the school administration is acutely aware of the concerns of, you know, regarding school projections and enrollment. I know Josh has been to more of the meetings than I have, but but they get it, right? Like they're not going to show up. Like I get there when they come to their budget meeting, they're not going to show up with nothing. Um, I mean, I think they've dedicated like multiple pages to their budget report this year to talk about demographic trends. Like, so, so they get it. From, from what I understand, at least I've talked to school committee members recently, is um, challenge with Gibbs, I think you know, maybe the reference, is it's a, it's a single grade building, mm -hmm. right? So, like, what happens is in elementary schools is um, if you have a class, let's say you have a third grade, a fourth grade class that has uh, three sections and a fifth grade class that has four sections. Or I should say third grade has four, fifth grade has three, but you know, just go three, four, three, four, three, four. You can kind of move the kids around, right? You can, you know, this year, this, you know, this, this row of seven classrooms is going to be four for fifth grade and three for fourth grade. And the next year we're going to flip it, right? And we're going to just bounce it back forth. Right? Challenge you're running into it. You can't do that. It's one sixth grade. So you can have a class of 400 show up, a class of 400 show up, a class of 400 show up, and a class of 600 show up. And actually, that's wildly made up, by the way. Um, but you can't, you have to deal with that one year, it's there. And that's what they've been saying that for years that they have stress on is they have no way to load balance those kids that are coming for them. I mean, so that's the challenges they talk about. It. <laughs> uh, just a comment on, on projecting these things. with. We don't know yet the impact of the MBTA Communities Act and potentially other zoning changes to increase the town's density. So I, I guess that'll put a lot of credibility on the projections and out further about a couple of years. We could have serious growth and we have no idea. At this point, this is a near term problem. So, yeah. right. right. It probably be the way Mike Brown. All right. So, um, the school needs $880,000 to do a complete overhaul to the bracket playground. We allocated 80,000 in fiscal year 23, and um, we're asking for another 800,000 in fiscal year 25. Um, the project is in the design phase. This is the playground where we had an injury reported back in 2021, I believe, 22. Um, and they plan on replacing the equipment, uh, replace the wood chips with rubber, and upgrade the basketball court. 
the project is in design and it's planned, it's scheduled to start this summer. Any questions, um, Carolyn and Aljo? Um, thank you. Um, when was this um, playground done? A mill? It was when the bracket was renovated. Last time? The bracket was last renovated in 2000. Okay. Alan? Um, a, a question right across the street, we're spending a million four for a new playground. And I spent a lot of time up at Robbins Farm and during school hours, the bracket, the, the bracket playground is really full. There's nobody. Robin's Farm and, and out of school hours, Robin's Farm is full, and there's nobody in a bracken playground. I'm just wondering if there's any talk about like multi use of one big playground. And, and just to add to that, I went to the bracket school and we didn't have a playground on site when I was a kid, so we went across the street yeah. every day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you have to cross the street, but that's not an impenetrable. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, Has there been thought about that? I, I know there's been talk about it. Um, of course, our play, playgrounds are sort of a weird animal because some belong to the school and some belong to the town. Yeah, but let's um, not like paperwork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the town is not necessarily willing to exclude citizens from the playground in order for the school to take it over. So I think there's been some question about, you know, do we really want to have a situation where we mix yeah, kids from school? Yeah, during school hours, there's nobody in the park playground. Because well, all the kids are in school. Younger kids, well, in this case. Very few. Well, very few. Yeah, I, 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 I spent a lot of time. Yeah, I think yeah. the problem has been the question of, you know, how would we exclude the public from that now school playground? I know they didn't come to a conclusion. Well, we exclude them from the bracket playground. Right. We, and, you know, I, I'm but that's unexcluded. You know, we don't want the tape to get in the way of <laughs> saving a million bucks. So I'm just wondering if there's any It sounds like there was discussion. There was about discussion. That, and it was rejected. Yeah, it yeah. was rejected. It's the only way. That so was not maybe my that's a million dollars. We wouldn't. Eight hundred eighty thousand wouldn't necessarily have to spend, or could spend it on something else. More sidewalks. <laughs> okay, uh, Annie. I would just like to suggest that in the modern era, having a dedicated playground closer to the school building, um, particularly when the condition is in, is a security issue. You know what? If it's were, in the Robbins Farm playground. If I were <laughs> parents of a grade school child. In 2024, I would not want my child that far from the ability to get into a building under current circumstances. So when I went to Bracket, we had three um, pedophiles living within the school district. Mm -hmm. When you went with to the Bracket, those three pedophiles didn't own the air. Right. Uh, can I answer? <laughs> They didn't make AR-15. No, you you check to see if they have them now. All right, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Let's move on to facility. Yeah. All right. So we're going to shift gears here um, and look at facilities. Um, so the Robbins Library, uh, we're looking to do a, we're sort of calling the, the main entryway plaza. Uh, the stairs there, they're granite slabs and they're uh, in disarray. They're um, sort of heaved and out of alignment with each other and tripping hazards. Um, looking to do, so a, a full plaza renovation there um, to the tune of $725,000. Um, town hall renovations. Um, this is something that we request annually, uh, $75,000. This will be dedicated to um, our route and uh, clock tower issues. Um, but there is a massive need of town hall for work. Um, I don't know if there would ever be an appetite to fund that on some sort of an exclusion, but the, the general needs are very high at town hall also. Uh, and then the DPW, um, at the building, something that was value engineered out um, is a dust collection vacuum system um, and maintenance shop. Um, that's something that OSHA requires. So, um, so these is requesting that. And then um, the the various school projects; those have all been covered. But um, these are all the ones with facilities department that sort of 
um, going to be managing in FY25. I want to sort of put a premium on our facilities department. They're relatively new in town, um, but it's about <coughs> three and a half million dollars in FY25 projects. Um, so maybe we'll go to the next page and then we'll take questions on these. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, fire station cannabis mm -hmm. replacements. Um, in FY26, we're looking to do um, mechanical, uh, so that's like HVAC at um, headquarters, uh, waterproofing also at headquarters. In FY26, that's kind of a larger combined project. And then at Highland, um, a mechanical system replacement in FY27. And then um, other, these are things we've sort of touched on a couple of these. Um, is the community safety building and elevator replacement um, in 27. That elevator will be, I believe, 21 years then, when you're old. Um, the library storefront door, so sort of a second part of the uh, plaza project is replacing the doors, uh, doing that in FY27. And then a hardy, a solar array there in FY26. Okay. That's good on Question. facilities. So being in Jennifer and then Um, so a couple of small questions. One is why is a party school solar array down here rather than up here in various projects? Um, those are, so yeah, I'm not sure why we have organized okay. front year versus future year. Oh, okay, got it. Um, second, um, one of the things that was value engineered at the BW are these shades, and I think you're going to need to shade those for there, and they're just sun streaming in. Into the main conference room. Um, but and third, just a question: Where does the um, uh, the renovation of bathrooms in Robin is that this year, or next year? That's this year, but it's being funded out of CTA money. Oh, but CTA, yeah, okay. that that is happening. CDBG. Okay. Excuse me, CDBG. CDB, okay. So block grant. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Um, yeah. So I uh, three areas of concern. One town hall um, when we did our budget reviews over there, department heads, I mean, even the uh, select board's office, right, the meeting room is in need of repair. I'm a bit confused. I mean, you all, some of you work there and see it. How are we to let it get to this without insisting that more be spent on it? Um, I mean, I understand asking for department heads to come with projects, but is there any proactive um, Worse, that says no. You need to do more than what you're asking for. Um, yes. The, so, so the the general awareness of the need is high. Um, our town manager ran our facilities department for a while on sort of an interim basis, at least. Uh, so that he was a certified contractor, very sort of aware of these kinds of issues and how to deal with them. Um, it's going to be a hugely expensive job to fix. Um, so um, I don't know if, I don't know why the request has not come in the past. Um, I don't know that I can really answer to that, but um, it is on our radar looking into the future and it will probably be coming next year, the year after for some envelope work. So the only thing is that in the past, we used to allocate $100,000 every year for town hall. And because of budgetary constraints, we've got it down to 75, when in reality, we need to triple, more than triple. We're also looking to seek um, funds mm -hmm. to do some of the well, One idea that we're considering is the community preservation money for that. Okay. Yeah. And then sort of along those lines, I mean, I do worry about Audison and what seems to me in the past couple of years of hearing this decision of not spending money on Audison because it'll eventually be rebuilt, but I feel like that strong arming would putting it in a situation where it's going to have to be, right? It's not that we aren't spending any money, we're being selected. Um, but I don't think we're creating a position, creating that position that already exists. Okay. And then my, my third area is a concern that came up when uh, the libraries were here and we talked about the Fox Library and sort of knowledge in 2015 to 2018 when plans were made that uh, there were lots of ADA non-compliant issues and that nothing was done really since then to fix those. Is there any proactive um, force amongst you to sort of 
force some ADA compliance issues. I, I see later in the presentation, you are doing 100,000, I guess, in ADA compliance, but historically, it seems like you've been not focusing on areas where we know we have to have ADA compliance on town buildings, like the Fox Library. Yeah, the a, the Fox is not ADA compliant, but they plan on building a new. Right, but the library. past ten years right. it hasn't been no. ADA compliant. But we're talking about right. building a, a, a new, brand new building for at least five years. I've been here, yeah. so the hope was to there is a get a new library. Yeah, you know, there there has been a town wide ADA survey right. to try to identify yeah. needs, and we've been slowly plugging our way through right. that. Okay. Um, but it's slow process and there's a lot of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll just briefly, I'll talk about his concern about the town hall. Just when I was meeting with the treasurer, um, you know, she mentioned that one of the staff there, the workspace had got completely trashed by the snow and the rain came in the water, desk, computer, phone, and it's not acceptable to have someone work in that. Um, and I gather last year that they went for 385000 in CPA money. Um, I don't know whether it would be this year we can ask it. And that the total budget is like $10 million. That's the right scale. Right scale. For, for town hall? Yeah. Uh, I think it's much bigger than that. Yeah. Well, for the, for the envelope work. For envelope work, yeah. Right. For the right. building as a whole, of right. course, that probably is still great. But we're just going to get it out to leak anymore? Yeah. That's, the right. part. That's like the yeah. ballpark. Okay. Just a little historical uh, observation that I, um, many years ago, they had a position called Properties, Director of Properties and Naturalization. Um, and that position was eliminated as a result of Proposition Two and a Half. And as a result of that position being eliminated for a number of years, the maintenance of all our town buildings uh, took a real major hit including the town hall. And if something had to come up, it was piecemeal, band-aid approach, until they brought back the patent of um, so, um, facilities. And there was a pretty good gap of years. And uh, I remember when I was on the school committee, a fellow on the school committee, uh, Bill Carey, kept on saying, we're going to pay the price for this down the road if we don't maintain our buildings. Just one that bit. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie and Annie. Charlie. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> the fire station that work that you're talking about here, uh, did you say the central station? But there's a picture of Park Avenue. Here. It's one of yeah, it's a representative picture. We just about five years ago finished re renovating the central fire yeah. station. Um, Ten years ago. Longer than that. Yeah. How long ago? Ten years ago. So we have. How much are we spending here in Central? About five hundred k. Yeah. The mechanical system. Mechanical and waterproofing, correct? The waterproofing in the last ten years. Waterproofing last ten years. Yep. That's uh, sort of amazing. Then, then it says that the high school is going to be leaking in ten years. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking the question. I, I mean, I think it's an older building. What, I'm, what I'm concerned about is what's, you know, it, it should be, let, I think it should be less longer than that. And and if we're letting these contracts out and, and winding up with inferior work, it's costing us a lot. Um, I'm also, con I'm not disagreeing that the town hall needs work. But seventy-five thousand dollars a year for the next five years—that looks to me like operating maintenance costs, not capital costs. And I, I don't understand why it's in the capital budget and not in a in, as an operating cost in the maintenance budget. The plan for that money is to, for it to be identified to actual projects that are big enough to be capital. So it's not supposed to be a you know replacing doorknobs or anything like but that. Have you but have got five years worth of actually identified projects that you've seen in a plan? Not yet. What we've done for that. Why are we, why are we looking for it? Well, we had a choice to not include them at all uh, and just 
you know, say we think it only takes 75k this year because these are the ones, this is where we know we're going to spend money. And that seemed like it wasn't really straightforward at all uh, because we know there's going to be bathrooms here and holes and rooms and who knows what else going on. So we tried to make a guess at something reasonable. And then for every year, when we get to the actual budget year, we make sure that we're talking about projects that are capital projects. So that's been our approach to that and a few other issues. Annie and Carolyn. Okay, so we're going to do mechanical system replacement at Highland or cent or no center of town. Uh, both one and twenty six and one and twenty seven. Right. And is that a complete replacement of the HVAC system? Um, I think it is not a complete replacement. I don't think it does interior fixtures, so I'm not positive. Well, once again, I'm asking: Are we putting any pumps that we have here? Or are we just? I'm not certain on the answer to that. Okay, it, I'd really like to know. I'd really like if we have the ability to move towards electrifying the building, so we can do some. Great. Yeah. So just another quick hit to Michael, since we have a lot of these people. Um, the Audison has been problematic um, constructions or problematic site with its construction since before I went to the school. Mm -hmm. Um, and and it's also built on a quarry, correct? Mm -hmm. And so digging up more would literally mean quarrying the granite to get more space in there. Just so that everybody can hear that. I definitely subjective. Well, you said about 20 minutes left, so um, we can Sorry. continue <laughs> and then people can focus their, their questions. Um, so we can finish up tonight. Sure, next. Uh, recreation, which I'll think of also for the kids. Um, <laughs> so, um, again, I'll, I'll actually start with the note in the bottom left, which is that, as Alex referred to earlier, the, the sort of our funding, which is but which is play paid for, is paying for a lot of playground work over the last few years, is now all done. So we're back to paying for playgrounds and, and fields through either the capital plan or, or in some cases, CPA. So, um, where we are today for or for FY25 is is one major project, which is Parallel Park. For those who don't know, it's that's on the other side, pretty much of the cemeteries, uh, where, right where Mr. Valley Parkway and Bedford Street intersect. Uh, has a playground that was closed uh, by the DCR because they actually own the underlying land uh, a few years ago, and so it really needs to be replaced uh, as well as the basketball court closer to the the intersection or the rotary. Um, so that's the sort of major uh, park project. As right now, there are no other major park projects in the in the five year plan, um, at least for for this as opposed to CPA. Um, and what they're proposing to do in FY twenty six and FY twenty eight, two master plans, one for fields and the other for playgrounds, to sort of figure out kind of what our future uh, needs to hold for you know work on playgrounds. One thing I we have heard talk of, it sort of goes to the question earlier about school playgrounds is that, you know, this is a very controversial thing to say out loud is that perhaps we can't afford to or don't have need to have as quite as many playgrounds as we have. And so that's going to be part of what that's going to look at. And then the field part will be looking obviously at, you know, sort of athletic field needs across the town. Uh, and the bottom right is a picture of the herd field project that was completed uh, with uh, uh, capital funds in the past. Um, and then they have three things they do every year. Uh, the sort of continuing expenditures. One is ADA study implementation plan, so that's improving the uh, accessibility of our parks and playgrounds. Uh, feasibility study, which they basically use to plan out future projects, um, both small and large scale projects, and sort of figure out scope, schedule, and budget for those so that they actually, when they do come to us with a request, they have a good sense of what the cost will be. Uh, and then something that was added more recently, which is the playground audit. And safety improvements, which is making sort of smaller but still capital eligible repairs uh, to playgrounds when a piece of equipment breaks and needs to be replaced, this becomes a source of funding for that. Um, you know, so that they have the flexibility to respond to those kinds of capital repairs that are smaller in scale. Questions, Charlie? Thank you, Chair. Why do we need this ADA uh, planning budget every year? And the feasibility study every year. If we're going to do these uh, master plans, so the the ADA study implementation plan is really is building out the ADA ADA improvements that were recommended from a study that was done 
several years ago. So that is actually building, uh, you know, pathways uh, for FY25. They're planning on using it to uh, create uh, or to, to figure out a plan for accessible parking at the new uh, Universal Design Playground that's being built at Robbins Farm Park, as was referred to earlier. Um, so that really is implementation. We we did ask that question for the playground feasibility study, and I think for future years there is a possibility that that may get pulled back. Uh, it's only ten thousand dollars a year; it's not a huge amount, but but yeah, I, I think it's a valid point that as they do these master plans, the need at least for the next few plan years for these kinds of feasibility studies may go down because they'll be looking at a broader range of questions. Second question is, um, or a second comment is that. Um, you know, I think, and I, I don't know who else to direct this to, so I'm directing it to the Capital Planning Committee and perhaps the Deputy Town Manager, but somebody's been going around town closing playgrounds. And the, the uh, playground at the Maui Arts Park has been closed for whatever reasons, uh, allegedly because it was uh, dangerous or whatever. And um, I, I, I was involved in having a, a professional engineer review it before it was shut down. And minor maintenance could have kept that playground open. And I know there are two playgrounds closed at Thompson School. Same same story is probably going on there. I, so, so, you know, the, the children of the town are being held hostage to, I don't know, consulting firm or some some jihadist on the uh, aviation committee. <laughs> but we, we need to have some rationale, rationality applied to how we expand these large amount of funds at the same time, the private citizens of service call. It doesn't make sense. I had a conversation with the facilities director. And he actually sent me a report on Thompson. Uh, they actually closed it because of safety concerns. And that's why we have $404,000 budgeted for Thompson. I mean, I but have we looked at what could be done for maintenance instead of paying $400,000? That's my answer. Well, I guess he needs to replace the whole equipment. Because probably I don't know if it's in light of what happened with a bracket, but they said it's not safe, and they actually have a whole report. I mean, we cannot challenge the architect's report or the engineer's report. We don't have the expertise. <laughs> At least the, the facilities director accepted it as valid. And I, I guess what I would say is that's that was part of the origin of the seven thousand seven seventy five thousand dollar a year line item was to be able to hopefully more proactively make some of those types of capital repairs before it turns into a closure or respond to a closure. I don't think we've caught up with some of the past, um, you know, problems. And, and obviously the Thompson is a, is a school playground, not a town playground. Thank you. Is there any way we can change this so that when something quote unquote breaks or becomes quote unquote unsafe at a playground that it can be repaired? rather than have the playground closed. I mean, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, my, my response to him was, aren't 10 year olds allowed to break their arms at the playground anymore? Or do they <laughs> have to shut an entire playground because somebody hurt themselves? That's insane. Well, I think that the $75,000 is to help head off some of these issues where like we have a broken piece of equipment. Maybe if we have a pole that's missing and somebody falls and breaks their arm, it's different than if somebody just slips off like, you know, like, uh, monkey bars or something like that, right? And so if we are, if it's our, if we're at risk of being sued because we have yeah. something that's broken, then that yeah, is why we close that now as opposed to, you know, it's your own fault, let's go get it fixed, right? It's, it's also it's very, just, fixing playground equipment is very difficult because it's, it's often like very specific equipment. Right. They like don't make it anymore. It's, it's sort of a weird industry and it would be great if somebody could make more off the shelf proponents for it, but that's not the business model that most of these companies operate unfortunately. I think some of these questions are maybe appropriately addressed in the director of facilities. Uh, so that's a conversation you might want to have with him. IT. And then make a case next year for moving this slide up and back. Okay, we're gonna arrange that. Um, <laughs> So in the interest of time, I'm just going to go through this quickly. The the bulk of these are for various infrastructure upgrades, um, network, um, computers, uh, software, and so on. Um, the one I want to call out is the uh, modernized agendas and minutes application. Uh, so that's an application that's used by um, uh, several uh, key uh, agencies um, to um, be able to post uh, plans 
uh, drawings and other large and complex files. And if you, I was looking for examples, and if you go to the select board and look at their agenda page, um, uh, there's you can understand why they would need something like this mm -hmm. as opposed to ours, which is relatively you know post a word, but no offense to our post a word document and minutes and things. So um, this, this seemed like a legitimate expense for the seventy thousand and. Uh, Fiscal 25, especially since the vendor is uh, um, So unless there's any questions, um, stipulating this really is the most important slide in the deck. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are we replacing notice? Yes. Okay, yeah, it. it's split, but it's the, it's the same company. So Granicus yeah. owns Novus. Okay. They have other products but that they're, they're offering. But they're not supporting it anymore. Right, they're, okay. they're sunsetting that as we're shopping around at looking at what, what else is out there. I've noticed this all day and not. Any other questions about IT? All right. Okay, thank you, Lindsay Harper. And uh, now on to the taking results for kids. We only have two items in the fire department's 25 capital budget. Their first is 39K for uh, their turnout year. It's a five year cycle or 80 fighting firefighters. That's eight, sorry, 16 units per year at about uh, uh, $2,500 per. So, there we have, have the amount. It includes the coat, the pants, the boots, and the hood. As shown here, we have the, uh, the coat. Um, the second piece is 57 k for a uh, staff vehicle replacement. This is an 11, this will be um, as of next year, it will be an 11 year old. Ford Interceptor, so it's uh, at its useful life end and need a new part. Um, that's all for 25. In the out years, you'll see uh, eight vehicles, including um, five staff vehicles of the uh, sedan, SUV, and pickup variety, a pumper, a ladder, and ambulance. So These are going to be uh, an expensive five years for vehicles for um, fire departments. Also, some equipment. There's travel with light. There's a uh, breathing apparatus, and there's some exercise equipment for firehouse. Question. Next slide, please. Okay. Police department only two items. Also, in 25, there's the annual 150k for vehicle replacement, which is typically three vehicles. Um, in 25, the police department plans on buying two marked and one uh, unmarked. Car, um, they're using SUVs currently, and they are doing hybrid whenever there is sufficient production to acquire a hybrid. Not electrics? No. And the reason, in the interest of time, I'll say quickly the vehicles are being used 24 7. It's hard to fully charge electric vehicle if you can't ever park it. Right. Okay. Uh, the second item for the police is a uh, electric. This one could be parked overnight. Uh, parking control vehicle, um, and that is covered out of the uh, the parking fund actually. So it's an other expense. Uh, there, there will be additional vehicles in the out here as well. Question. All right, and then moving on to the grand other page, which is page thirty five. Um, Let's see. Uh, currently, in this fiscal year, 24, we're paying the design and planning work for the Vets Memorial Park. Um, if you were here last year, you'll see that this was very familiar. It was actually going to be done. Uh, so the, the actual um, construction was to be done in 25, 26. It's been pushed back one year. So it could be done in 27. Total cost for that uh, is $2.65 million, of which Town is kicking in up to 895k, and then any other funds have to come from elsewhere. So um, outside funds, state funds, uh, private fundraising, etc. Um, if those don't materialize, we will we will not uh, cover the rest of the town. We've already received a grant. What's that? We've already received a grant for this project. Some of the, some some of the, the yeah, thing. just yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Other large items um, we mentioned before, there's the uh, ongoing $100,000 year for ADA upgrades. Um, 
this uh, really our architectural barriers at public property that uh, hamper access. Um, there is the usual 400K of uh, academic PCs for our students. We uh, find about um, a thousand of these per year uh, on a four to five year refresh cycle. And there's an EK for our administrators, our school administrators PCs as well. Question. Chris. All right. So back to where we started. What do we need from the finance committee? Uh, we're asking you to vote favorable action on our recommended budget for fiscal year 25. Uh, the reappropriation of unused capital funds, which I'll cover in just a minute, uh, and to endorse the five year plan. Um, so, to cover uh, the sort of overall budget, this particular formulation of the budget is one that's been requested over the years by the Finance Committee, where we see both the exempt and the non exempt debt service uh, adding to about $20 million. Uh, cash capital spending of about five. Um, and then there's the um, offsets from the antenna fund capital carry forward, for, carry forwards, which is capital projects which were finished under budget. So that money stays in the capital fund. Uh, and the Rican Rec Enterprise Funds would pay some of the debt service uh, associated with those projects. So that other financing uh, there, which is maybe a poor term because there's also the other category that we've talked mm -hmm. about of grants, that's something else. Um, brings us down to a net capital appropriation, including exempt debt of $24 million. Dean and Al Jones and Sean. I would like to move to recommend vote of the Capital Planning Committee as shown on slide 37 of 42 with, with a total net capital appropriation of $23,969,435. Okay. I, I would like to further. Thank you, Annie. Third, I'd like to further approve the reappropriation of borrowed funds as shown on slide 38 of 42, in the total amount of $405,342.88. And then finally, I would like to vote that I would like to move that the, cap, the Finance Committee endorse the Capital Planning Committee's, um, what did you call it again? Five year plan. Five year plan for the yeah. fiscal years. 25 to 29. 25 to 29. Thank you so much. Second and second. They are. Second. <laughs> second. They are. <laughs> um, do you have anything you want to add? No. Right. Um, <laughs> so, um, Alan Jones yeah, and John and Rebecca have some questions. Um, the the uh, parking control vehicle, um, 32,000 five years old, says it's being paid for by the parking fund. The parking lot parking fund offset isn't listed in that. Table like the antenna fund. Can you be a 32 um, that, that by the table, you mean page 37? Yeah. So um, it's a future purchase, whereas table 37 is FY25. Okay. So we'll be there. Thank you. Um, likely, we would just list it as other funded. Wait, so it's yeah, 32 FY25. Um, it's another. Oh. Yeah. oh, so it's a, it is another. Sorry. It's, it's not an year. offset, it's, it's an other funding source. Yeah. Well, what's the difference in the entire fund of the parking basket? What's the difference? Um, I don't know. Yeah, the entire fund we can spend on. My understanding of the entire fund is we collect the money, we Wait. can spend it on parks and um, and recreation. Is it parks? We do on recreation. So, so the, yeah, the, the the parking fund. Um, it, or where's the thirty-two thousand come from to pay for the like, it, it comes from it, 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 media it, it's already yeah, it's gonna be paid directly for that. It's like an enterprise. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like like an enterprise. Right. Well you got those enterprise funds on that table. We have a couple of them <laughs> listed. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, what's the difference between saying the antenna fund or the enterprise fund versus getting the I think the other ones are listed as general offsets and that is like has a specific plan. Okay. It's like okay. not quite as clear as Okay. Yeah. Uh, John. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my questions relate to the um, the four point nine million the cash capital, and um, I think last year was three point nine million the same same category cash capital. Uh, I understand that you know we we allocate five percent of our budget to capital expenditures, um, but the, my, the thing that kind of just kind of sticks in my head is we necessarily have to spend five percent every year, and 
for instance, last, I, I looked into the 3.9 that was allocated last year, and I think only, you know, 786K have been spent so far. And I know this is a tough question for like 956, but I just wonder if, you know, could, could we add a column to the spreadsheet going forward or is, is consider it where you have um, bank them, save them on? Is there any mechanism where you can just say, all right, we don't really have anything to spend this money on, but we know we need to spend 5% of our, our, our budget on capital each year, but we have nothing to spend it on this year. Let's just kind of bank it. We don't really have a mechanism to do that. That's not a problem we typically have. We're, we're <laughs> trying to get rid of projects if we can't afford them. Oh, okay, so in, I, I look at the, again, that current year expenditures. It does seem like there's a little bit of like kind of filler in there. And again, just to support that, I said, you know, what happened to the 3.9 million in that current spent last year? Mm -hmm. Only 780K of it has been spent. I know there's supposed to be. But there's also encumbrances. So, 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 you need to look so um, either Ram and sent me that email. Yeah, yeah. Ram several reports. Um, so keep in mind, I mean, the way government spending works, we can never even see it right at the moment. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, whether it's getting quotes, getting procurements, or with the DPW stuff, getting a lot of that at the same moment. So what you're seeing in March um, isn't necessarily a really accurate reflection of what will get spent. But then in the, to your other question about you know banking money, I and mean, I think we've heard bank, um, you know, there's overwhelming needs for really almost more than 5%. But we could do that. So the challenges seem like there's like we have like big expenses that we just we have no real way to address the big expense like town hall. But you know, there's a there's all sorts of seven hundred and fifty k there and six hundred k there and one hundred k there, but there's there's nothing like you know, there's no eight million dollars. That's what that's what debt exclusions are for. Yeah. Come again? That's what debt exclusions are for. Is there any five percent capital is to address the capital issues that what we can for yeah. yeah, I just wanted to raise it. I know yeah. it's 957. I wanted to raise the question, but thank yeah, you. Can I also add that, uh, yes, we've spent 700,000, but we've also encumbered 5,000, 500,000. So these are legal obligations. But then there's still two, two million plus that has to right. be and, and that's a time aid. So yeah. Most of it is going to, they're going to start to work at DPW, yeah. for example, in the spring. Yeah, I just thought if you could take the pressure off of spending 5%, you know, putting 5% aside is great. But do you necessarily have to spend five percent? And I guess that's not a problem. But two so last just questions. Two, question. two last questions, Rebecca, and then I'll toss. Thank you. Um, so I have a question about something that's sort of missing from this plan, and that is there's a separate warrant uh, or a separate article in the warrant for using for the Fox Library for the hundred fifty thousand dollars to do the planning for the rebuild of the Fox Library. So I have sort of a two part question, which is why. Is that not part of the capital plan? And is that something that you considered? So why is the Fox Library somehow unique in that it's a separate warrant article? And um, and then the second part is, if that were to go forward, is there space in the five-year plan for the actual rebuild of the Fox Library? Is that something the committee has called them to? So the Fox Library has been on our radar for a long time, you might expect. Um, the reason that there's a separate um, warrant article for that funding is that it's required by the Mass Temp Board of Library Board of, Commissioners. Yeah, Board of Library Commissioners, uh, from which we hope to get a grant, yeah. uh, which would cover 40, 50 percent, presumably, of the cost. Um, the exact cost is unknown at this point. That's part of what we're finding out. Um, but should we, you know, decide to move forward on that library and get a bill for it so we know what we're going to spend. We'll have to figure out as a town whether that's something we want to try to fit in a capital plan or we want to do a debt exclusion or what the process, process would be. So there's no space already allocated? There's, not a that reserve, I there's no reserve yeah. space. Yeah. Right. Uh, we try not to reserve space for things that are a little too theoretical to know if we're doing them. Uh, because the answer to the question is, are we doing this library may depend a lot on whether we get that grant or not. Thank you. So. I'll pass this. Okay, three questions. On page 30, it says under other Robbins storefront doors. Now, we get a lot of Robbins buildings in this town. <laughs> it's not the Robbins library. house. The library. library. The library. The library. The front door is at the library. 
Those are three hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Second question. Um, I think Al Jones's comment was, I think, uh, it's important in in trying to simplify and be transparent to have all of the projects in one place and all of the funding sources in one place, whether they're enterprise funds, parking funds. It, it wouldn't be hard to just add the cost uh, up here and then down here have from parking fund. And that way it's all in one place. So not asking you to change it now, but think about that for next year. Well, that, that's what we thought we were doing on slide 16. Right. Uh, on slide 16, you'll see something that looks more like what I think you're asking for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what like 15,000 from recreation, 32,000 <clears> from benefit. Yeah, and that's, and that's above the 5% line. So. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. but, um, and my third question is, uh, it doesn't sound like it. Do you have any uh, rescissions or prior borrowings? No. 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 Okay, in that case, I'd like to add another motion to uh, vote no action on Article 41, which is the rescission article. All right, okay. so second to that? Sorry. All right. <coughs> All right. Uh, I think we're ready for votes. Um, we have Dean's motion. We'll do that first and then Alan motion second. Um, all in favor of Dean's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Um, next is Al Tofty's motion on Article 21. Were, were Dean's motions supposed to be three separate ones? No. No, it's oh, one, okay. one joint motion. I jumped. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and um, El Tosi motion is no action on the second. And Al Tosi motion is no action on the All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, unanimous. Yes, John. Uh, I can make a, a motion that the committee uh, ask the chair to uh, request the town manager when he comes uh, that we have a complete analysis of the Expense overruns across the DPW program. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.